accused of stealing my ex-husband from his fiancée. So my ex-husband, male 40, and I, female 41, separated four years ago. It was I who asked for the divorce, but we had a lot of problems, and we both knew that we weren't compatible anymore. My biggest issue was that he never was there for me, nor was he understanding. It was after our daughter was born, female 6. He never helped me, and he just went on with life like it was before she was born. Nothing was the same after our daughter was born, of course, and I couldn't reach him. We fought all the time. I was suffering from depression and weight gain, and I felt shit about myself. I probably wasn't easy to handle either. The divorce was amicable, and he proved all my worries wrong that he would neglect our daughter. Since it felt like he was unwilling to adapt to his new role as a father after her birth, but no. I was happy that he proved me wrong, and that he turned out to be a great father to our daughter, but at the same time, I wished he would have stepped up earlier when we were still together. He started seeing his fiancée, female 31, about three years ago. This killed me because I still loved him very much, but I wanted to be happy for him for our daughter's sake, so I just pretended that I was just that. After a while, he introduced her to my daughter, and she seemed to be nice, and she was very good with my daughter, and loved her, and my daughter seemed to really like her, so I was at least relieved that she's a good person who cared about my child. I never told anyone about my feelings and regrets, but I kept it to myself, because it's my own doing, and now I take the responsibility. About six months ago, when my ex was dropping off our daughter, he told me that he was engaged. I felt like I wanted to pass out, and I don't even remember how I managed to pull myself together and put on a smile to congratulate him. I cried for weeks afterwards. I didn't even know what I was expecting, but I was devastated. A few weeks after, I met my ex-husband's sister at the grocery store, and she asked me how I felt. I felt my tears welling up, and all she needed to do was hold my hand for me to burst out crying. She asked me if I still loved him, and I tried to act happy for his sake, but she probably wasn't convinced. My ex was a bit changed afterwards, and at first I thought that I was imagining things. While we've always been cordial towards each other, he was more chatty now, and he made excuses to stay longer during drop-offs, and even a couple of times I thought that he made sure to arrive around dinner to ask if he could stay because he was hungry. Then a few weeks later, the sister showed up at my place with my ex-husband, and she told us that we needed to talk. He said that he never knew that I still loved him, and that he still loved me too. If he knew, he would have never tried to move on. Later I heard that he ended his engagement. His mother called me, even before I knew he had ended his engagement, to tell me that I was the asshole for ruining his happiness, that I broke his heart, and now I waited for him to find a good woman who could give him a good future, a better future with more children, to just pick him up again. Also, his fiancé sent me many DMs calling me an old witch who was using my daughter and his love for her to take him, that I'm pathetic and desperate, and he only thinks about our daughter. I feel bad because his ex has been nothing but good towards me, and she lost three years on him. Am I the asshole here? I didn't answer the ex-fiancé, and I haven't spoken to him yet. He's asking me out on dates and is talking about counselling so we don't make the same mistakes again. I feel so guilty. In the comments, Apprehensive Hippos says, Well, communication for the win. His suggestion of counselling is a good one. You can both learn to, like his sister, get to the heart of the issue. I wouldn't feel guilty if I were you. Feel badly for his ex? Sure. And speaking of communicating, your ex needs to do that with his mother if you're going to pursue this new, improved relationship with your ex, and he needs to be direct and succinct. You have nothing to feel guilty about. You went out of your way to support his new relationship and keep your feelings about him to yourself. Your former sister-in-law did the right thing based on the knowledge that she had about both of you. If your ex wasn't interested, then nothing would have changed but he was interested and made the decision to end the engagement because that is what he wanted to do. You didn't ask him to. 
In my opinion, your ex made a wise suggestion, which is to go to couples counseling to address having healthy communication between the two of you, rather than first leaping back into dating, which may fail if you fall back into old habits. The worst thing that happens here, OP, is that you would, as a couple, decide that your relationship will remain as it is now. But at least you will have tried and will know why it failed, which is useful going forward. OP replies, that is exactly what he said too. Sorry, but it seems like OP doesn't know how to communicate at all, while ex-husband seems so dense. Why did he wait until OP brings up divorce before starting to be a good dad? If he still loves OP, why did he go and propose to another woman? Dating to move on is understandable, but to the point of asking for her hand in marriage? That's way too much. OP says, I think me trying to communicate was just heard as nagging towards the end of our marriage. I was diagnosed with depression too, so it didn't help either. Anything that I'm not happy with about his behaviours was because you're just depressed and not happy. I don't think he really understood that his life had changed either. Like, he just couldn't book a last minute skiing trip with the guys because it was cheap and then leave me for three days. What made me leave was the night when he was out with his brother-in-law and our baby suddenly had a fever and I couldn't reach him because it was too loud at the bar. It broke me and I was terrified of the future. In hindsight, maybe I was rash and if I was in a better mental state, I probably would have tried harder. His mother sounds like a nasty beer. OP says, I don't think she is, but she and I were never close from the start and I've heard that she adored his ex fiance which is fair because she is more pleasant and social. I am very hurt, of course, by what she said. That makes me feel guilty, but I can't be mad at her. That's why I haven't told him yet what she's been saying, because I don't want to create problems between them, and I don't want it to look like I'm egging him on or something. We still don't even know if we're getting back together or not. We have a long way ahead, especially with our daughter between us. We can't get back together unless we are both sure that it will work this time so we don't confuse our daughter. She is already too excited the few times he's been staying for dinner after dropping her off. I don't know. It makes me more worried that if this doesn't work, then I've ruined his relationship for absolutely nothing and it makes me feel like shit, but he disagrees and says it isn't for nothing and it is worth a try. We either get back together or we move on properly this time. I can kind of understand why the ex's ex-fiance now has sent all these terrible messages to OP. Because she got strung along for three years while he was obviously in love with someone else. I feel like she got played incredibly hard, but he's also kind of playing OP here. Yes, he's visiting more, but it doesn't really seem to be an acknowledgement that he did anything wrong in that relationship. He doesn't seem to be addressing anything. OP's caught between a rock and a hard place here because all of these decisions were made without her choosing. She just got emotional at a supermarket and <laughs> the brother's sister just decides to go and open this can of worms? Surely she knows that he was a lazy piece of shit and didn't do any of the hard work that a parent is supposed to do, instead just kept going on holidays and leaving her to drown. I can understand going to therapy together and trying to hash these things out, but I'd say give it a year or so, you know? Figure things out, see if he's going to be an amicable co-parent that can pull his weight on his own without screwing another woman over in the process. Handle all that shitty baggage first before jumping headlong into any decision to get back with this guy. I'm not seeing any concessions for someone that was a shit partner to OP at the lowest point of her life, Stringing a woman along for three years and then dumping her like it's nothing? Tread so goddamn carefully, OP. And now onto the update, titled, We spent Christmas together as a family, but we are terrified that we would hurt and confuse our daughter. Hi again, this is kind of an update I guess. Thank you for all of your support, I didn't expect the majority to be on my side. I want to make a little update. My ex-husband has been spending more time with me, often without the knowledge of our daughter because we don't want to confuse her in case this doesn't work out. I love him so much, so I don't know why I'm so terrified. We have also had a couple of therapy sessions together to talk. We will continue with therapy. 
My husband's sister has been the one taking care of our daughter when we are seeing each other. We go on walks, dinner dates, and therapy. On Christmas, he spent the day with us. There were some problems because he was supposed to celebrate with his parents, my daughter, and his sister, and her family. Mother-in-law refused to include me, so he ended up asking me if we could celebrate at my place. Sister-in-law chose to celebrate with us instead. I had my sister and her family too. Our daughter was very happy about this, since he has been staying for dinner a few days a week with our daughter. We are frightened about how to proceed. I'm afraid to mess up my daughter. Our plan is for him to move in with us or that we move to a new house together as a fresh start. Our only problem is that my husband's ex refuses to leave his apartment and we're going to need to sell both properties to be able to have one bigger house for a new start. What do you think? Are we hurting our daughter? Anyone here who is or has been in the same situation and can tell me what children think about their parents being together after growing up with them apart, are we taking it slow enough? In the comments, Professional Chair 28 says, Info, how old is your daughter? Does she remember a point in her life when y'all were together? Was she aware and knowledgeable when y'all split the first time? OP says, she is six. No, she doesn't remember us being a family. She was 20 months old when her dad and I separated. Alert Bid says, if you are both 100% sure that you're getting back together and want to stay in your house or get a new house, Ask your daughter, would you like to move to a new house? Would you like daddy to be with us? I see no harm in asking your daughter about her feelings on the situation now. I'm not saying give her your full history, but getting her feelings and thoughts out there, she may have questions. And letting her know that she can ask anything and all her feelings are valid may also make your and your partner feel a bit better moving forward. But if you both don't know, or, you know, whatever, ask your daughter. You may be going slower than necessary. From my point of view, if you and your partner are both together with your daughter in a happy household, and your daughter is happy when you're both around, don't panic too much. You can always have mummy and daddy daughter days out, as she's probably used to that from when you were separated, and it would be a fun thing for her to have all the attention of just one parent for the day. I think a new house would be a lovely adventure for you all to sort of stamp out a new life. Make fun plans to travel and never stop communicating. Have relaxed conversations, cuddle up about your thoughts and feelings, and make sure you are both doing all you can so that you both feel validated. This is a second chance. Grab it with both your hands. I can imagine there'll be drama from his mother and ex, so this time is the time where you both need to be strong together and make sure you both work as a team to deal with it together. Good luck. And OP replies, if I ask my daughter, she will be more than thrilled. The times that her father stays for dinner, she is just so happy. She almost lives with me full time now because he rents a room since his ex still refuses to leave his apartment. She has her own apartment, but still wouldn't leave his. I guess we are both terrified of moving forward because we don't want to hurt our daughter. Isn't it manipulative if I asked her if daddy can move in when she knows that I want him to? I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking things. The therapist said as much. We do a lot of family activities together now, just the three of us, and she enjoys it very much. I don't know, this whole thing has only been eight months since he proposed to his ex, till us trying to reconcile. Maybe it's going to stay like this for a few more months, with a few more therapy sessions. Peter says, This entire thing is just a mess. Most people think they want kids until the kids pop out and their entire social norm changes. This is what happens when you don't play The Sims. The Sims indirectly teaches you how difficult and time-consuming it is to raise kids. What I'm concerned with is the complete lack of acknowledgement from the ex that he effed up as a parent, causing her to leave. I hope that gets addressed in their therapy sessions before they move forward again. Yes, it's like she had their child and he couldn't cope with what that can entail. It seems from just this glimpse, what she felt at that time was totally normal and she was lacking his support. Baby blues are real, PPD is real, and it sounds like he just couldn't cope? I would hope that's not accurate, but I was in her shoes and my ex left a month after ours was born because he still lived his pre-baby life while I was drowning but it's like she's blaming herself here. He didn't try to cope. He just didn't think that he had to do any of the work. Lol, 
The ex is still a piece of work. So you're saying on top of being a bad partner to OP at her lowest, he also strung a woman along for three years while he was in love with someone else because he didn't want to be lonely? He might be a great dad, but he seems like a shit partner. And people call me picky when I tell them that I don't want to date single dads. This situation is a ticking time bomb. OP making these decisions while in her feelings, no acknowledgement to the things her ex did that ended the marriage to start with, his former fiancé refusing to leave his apartment, just yikes all around. Ah yes, worrying about moving too fast, while also planning to buy property together, but maybe waiting a few more months first. Of course, that'll fix everything! Kind of amused, confused, ex-fiancé is apparently squatting at ex-husband's, after eight months, either he doesn't have the fortitude for an eviction, or they've tangled finances and stakes that OP isn't acknowledging. Am I the asshole for calling my wife fat? I, 34 male, work in a physically demanding field. Myself and my co-workers are all fit people, without a lot of body type variety. My wife, 32 female, is fat. The thing is, she's always been fat, the whole time I've known her. We dated when she was fat, we got married when she was fat, she knows she's fat, she is fat and she is beautiful. I'm happy if she loses weight, and I'm happy if she stays where she is. I think she is the most beautiful woman in the world as is. One of my co-workers Julia, 28 female, started complaining that she's too fat to be loved, and fat people don't get to be loved. Julia isn't fat. She's maybe, maybe, 120 pounds. She works out five times a week and barely ever reads. I told her that that wasn't true and that my wife was fat. She got really red in the face and started telling me that I wasn't allowed to call my wife fat, that I was insulting her, and that my wife was beautiful and curvy. Carol doesn't like being called curvy. She thinks that it's a label to avoid calling people fat because it's a dirty word to most people. I told Julia as much. Julia started threatening to tell my wife I called her fat. She pulled up her Instagram and told me she was messaging Carol that I was being mean. I beat her to the punch and I called my wife. I put her on speaker and asked if she was curvy or fat. Carol laughed and said, I hate that curvy shit. Fat and beautiful, baby. I thanked her, told her that I loved her, and hung up. As soon as I hit end, Julia went mental. She started screaming that I was abusing my wife, and when I asked how, she said I was clearly brainwashing her into accepting the term fat to try to keep her complacent and from getting away from me. That no woman in her right mind could be okay with their husband calling them fat. I showed her a picture of my wife in a shirt that had BBW on it. She bought it for herself, by the way. She stormed off and hasn't spoken to me since. Now, I just walked in today to an email from HR requesting a meeting with me. I don't think it's a big deal. I have my wife's blog for fat positivity, the shirt, and can easily call her for proof. But now, things are frigid at work, and Julia constantly gives me dirty looks when we're in the same room. She ignores me otherwise. So I'm just over here scratching my head. Am I the asshole for calling my wife fat? In the comments, Drama and a Headache says, The difference between your wife and Julia is that your wife loves herself. Julia can't even pretend to. Yup. The HR thing is wild. Imagine fishing for validation from a man, your married co-worker, going off on him for loving his wife, threatening to DM her, and then reporting him to HR. Not the asshole. If anything, Julia may be upset because she can't blame her insecurities on this idea of being fat, or she uses this idea of body positivity to push others into expressing fat phobia that she internalizes. Sounds like Julia was fishing for OP to be like, Oh no, Julia, are you crazy? You're not fat at all. You're beautiful. But instead, he was like, Eh? No? You can still be loved if you're fat? My wife is fat and I love her. So instead of getting the fished for compliment, she got told how much OP loves his wife and he didn't even tell her she wasn't fat. 
Julia sounds like she has serious issues, and feeling somehow shamed for her fishing expedition going awry, and that she had basically insulted Opie's wife while not getting the validation that she craved, she went full throttle in the direction of trying to shame OP back in an attempt to deflect from her own feelings of deep shame and self-loathing. Not the asshole. And your wife sounds awesome. Julia should get a better hobby because she sucks at fishing. OP says, My wife is the light of my life. She makes me smile every day, and she's the reason that I wake up in the morning. Thank you. I just want to say that I hope I meet someone someday that talks about me the way that you talk about your wife. Fat isn't a bad word itself. It's as bad as you want to be. Tone and context is everything. Fat is a description. Valid is short, tall, thin, blue, or brown eyes. Fat shaming isn't when someone says, I am fat, which is true. It's when they're trying to denigrate myself, bashing my self-worth on my weight. And if you don't do it with your wife, your wife isn't doing it to herself. And for your coworker, it seems that she's correlating her self-worth with her body appearance and projecting onto your wife. Not the asshole. Can't agree more with that one. You were not fat shaming your wife. This woman you're working with sounds vile and as if she's looking to cause drama and force you to accept her worldview. If anything, she's creating the hostile work environment, though I can't imagine HR really wants to waste their time with this one. More so, how does this make the company look? Oh, no one cares? Alright, both of you piss off. I really do hope that it's as simple as that, but you never know. Some people like this will escalate as far as possible until they are correct and everyone else agrees with them. And now, on to the updates. So, I met with HR at 4 o'clock today. Apparently, multiple co-workers who had overheard the conversation stopped by HR through the day to give their side and weigh in. I wasn't in trouble. They just wanted my side of things. It checked out with what everyone else had said too. I still don't know which of my crew stopped by, but I owe them my life. I offered to show my wife's blog, and our rep, who's a really nice girl, told me that if it didn't affect my work, it was irrelevant. The story had been corroborated enough by others. HR reiterated a lot of what y'all said. Even though Julia initiated the conversation, I shouldn't have jumped in. It was less of a scolding and more of a request to keep my nose out of other people's business. I'm sad because I thought Julia and I were friends. We talked about our mental health struggles, the hardships of the field we're in, and heavy things like that. Won't be having those conversations any further. Julia and I will no longer be paired on teams for patient care. I was told my part of the investigation was done, and they thanked me for my time, so I think I'm going to be okay. Before I left, I told HR that if weight loss and body image wasn't supposed to be a topic of conversation, they should consider enforcing that on a company level. We have a weight loss challenge. I suggested making it a fitness challenge instead. She said they'd take it into consideration. So that's it. I wrapped up my treatments. Everything will hopefully shake out. Haven't spoken to Julia, hoping to avoid her for the near future. Thank you all for the sanity check. Now to quote Clue, I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife. In the comments, Mamba0824 says, he'll be sleeping with his fat wife and they'll be having a blast. F off, Julia. Julia started off whining that she can't find a partner because she's fat. OP says, I love my fat wife. You'll find someone. Julia goes off the deep end. I don't think Julia is single because she's fat. I used to be fat. I am not anymore, but anytime I tell someone I used to be fat, they're like, oh my god, no stop, you were beautiful. Like, I never said I wasn't. Both can be true. I got very sick and ended up hospitalized and losing a lot of weight due to an illness, and it took me a long time after to feel beautiful because I was so sickly. At least being fat was my choice, you know? I'm happy with my body now, but you seriously can't talk about being fat without offending someone. When I describe myself as fat and someone tells me I'm not, I just look at them and say, you know I own a mirror, right? I get so mad when people tell me I'm not. I'm quantifiably fat. I'm medically fat. I am fat. But them trying to deny it is them admitting they think there is something wrong with being fat. Just let me be fat and happy. 
Jeez. As a fat person, I really love that OP told them to drop the weight loss challenge. I worked out heavily. We're talking deadlifting and squatting my own weight, 4 days split, etc. for years, and I was fit. I could run and I could move, and I loved it. I also remained fat. Fitness is a great goal to have, and one that I'm working towards again after being ill for quite a long time. Focusing on weight loss as if it increases your worth, or as if it has to be your life's goal to weigh less, is harmful as hell, and putting it out as a company goal is ridiculous, possibly triggering and also telling your fat employees that they are existing wrong. I also fully agree with OP's wife, avoiding calling people fat is stigmatizing. Being fat isn't shameful. It's great if calling themselves curvy makes people feel good about themselves, but fat shouldn't be demeaning or an insult. It's simply a descriptor. Some beautiful words said there by some beautiful commenters. I do agree that putting that weight loss challenge out as a company goal, it's a bit short-sighted. I do think that fitness is a better goal to reach for as a company. I know that everyone here is saying that fat shouldn't be demeaning or an insult, that it is a descriptor, but me personally, it still feels, in this day and age, like saying fat is a huge insult. It's not one that I can really train out of my brain. Maybe that's a problem with me, maybe that's a problem with society and online culture and its associations with the word. But it would be nice to see in the future that fat isn't an insult and we accept more of this terminology. But hey, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next post is by user Specialist Ask 1719 titled, Am I the asshole here for screaming at my husband to get out after he pranked me with flowers? My husband and my marriage is not going well. I am very close to divorce and I've talked to him about it. I told him I wanted some effort. I wanted flowers, chocolate, a nicely written note, something that showed he wanted to romance me. He finally took it seriously and agreed. When I came home from a 12-hour shift yesterday, he had laid a trail of rose petals in our house. It was so beautiful. The trail ended at the kitchen sink, where he had piled a bunch of dirty dishes, pots, and pans to clean. He said that he got the idea from TikTok. I screamed at him to get out of my house. He left after arguing a bit. I cried. Some of my friends said that I was right, but others say that he was just being playful. Am I the asshole here? In the comments, Convivial Cat says, Not the asshole. I'm old and a widow. I had a very long and loving relationship with my husband. He had a fantastic sense of humor and often did very silly things to get a laugh out of me. Our marriage was solid because he would never have let me come home from a 12-hour shift to rose petals leading to a dirty sink of dishes. He would have had rose petals leading to a sparkling kitchen, dinner ready, and with him dressed in a French maid outfit, probably with his ass hanging out. God, I miss that man. Anyway, what your husband did, especially knowing how much you were really needing some romance, was incredibly cruel and tone deaf. I don't think this one is a keeper, OP. OP replies, I am so sorry for your loss. Your husband sounds like an incredible man who loved you very, very much. I wish I had that kind of love. TX Farmer says, TikTok is a pestilence. Did he film you? That's not playful, especially when the stakes are high. Get him a fake winning lottery ticket, then hand him a divorce decree. OP says, he had his phone out. I don't think he posted it, but if he does, then I'm done. I actually found the original or maybe one of the TikTok pranks that he used as inspiration. The comments even pointed out how messed up it was to do. I would give him a fake lottery ticket if I didn't know he would make a fuss about it. Not the asshole. It sounds like he's ready for a divorce too. Stop giving him chances. The effort taken to set up that misogynistic prank was likely greater than that required to simply get a bunch of flowers or show some romance, as OP requested. If he's not bothered about taking it seriously, then there isn't much reason for OP to do so either. Could be two unhappy people who would be much happier if they broke it off. I'd get the divorce papers ready and then leave the trail of rose petals to it. OP can say that she saw it on TikTok. He went for the jugular. 
Shortly after you voiced that he needed to be more romantic, he fakes a really romantic gesture, only for it to end in a misogynistic and sexist joke? That shows he cares zero percent. Even the excuse, I saw it on TikTok, is gross. He should know timing is everything, and this is a kick in the teeth. This would be what would make me divorce him. Not the asshole. Take your 100k a year and live free and happy. P.S. There was a salary of 100k mentioned, I think. Maybe it was never there? I don't know. I might be losing it. Right? Like, he was willing to put in more effort for a cruel prank than to make his wife feel loved. Yeah, nah, not to be the one to join the Reddit hate train, but this definitely is divorce territory to do something like that. And then he unironically filmed her as well. How absolutely cruel can you be? Like, I'm sure some of the TikToks that we've seen of that are real, but I'm also sure that some of them are pranks, because that is just so sinister and evil that I refuse to believe people are so thick and stupid to do something like that. For someone to be crying out for help and love and romance, and then for you to spit in their face like this, you're just asking to destroy your relationship. What an absolutely dickheaded move. Not the asshole, OP. He deserved more than being screamed at. And now, on to the update. So my husband came back home last night. I had cooled off, and then he ruined it by saying that I was overreacting, that it was funny, and he just wanted to make me laugh. I told him I was going to file for divorce because it was the last straw. He then started crying and begging me not to. He begged me to give him a second chance. I said he already got a second chance, and he squandered it by reminding me that I do all the daily chores in this house. This was why our marriage was rocky. I work in the medical field, while he is a blue-collar worker. Both of our jobs require long hours, but if I mess up, people die. He once said that I went through all that schooling just to get covered in blood and shit. He took it back after, but he wanted to make me feel low. He started doing that a bit after COVID started. I do the cooking and cleaning. I do the laundry, the sweeping, the dentist appointments. All he does is create more work for me. He wanted me to pack him lunch because his friends' wives do it. His friends' wives are either stay-at-home mums or they have part-time jobs. I do not have the time or energy to do that. He said that he mows the lawn. Well, guess what? It's winter, and I had to shovel the driveway because I had work in the morning, and he had the day off. I make more money, I bought our house at a low rate during COVID because his credit was too low. I had to save money for a down payment. I pay our mortgage. What did he contribute to my life? If I didn't have him in my life, I would have clean floors all the time and more money. At least, he could contribute love. He said he loved me, but he doesn't do anything to prove it. So I asked him for flowers, or chocolate, or a nice card. Literally anything to show some love. But instead, he dropped flower petals to a sink full of dirty dishes, pots, and pans. It's not even original. I'm done. I'm going to file for divorce. In the comments, Illustrious Complex 6 says, Her single life is going to be fantastic. She owns her own house, will have significantly less work without him around, and won't have to waste her income on him. He's going to regret this so much, and I hope there is another update. I wanted to give her a high five. We need more of that decisiveness with garbage partners around here. Honestly, he was probably banking on her continuing to boil in the pot like so many others on this sub. That's why he had a meltdown when he realized she was serious. He couldn't fathom that she would actually want to leave him. We love to see it. Such a perfect syntax there. A lot of the time, people would usually say, he didn't think she could live without him. And in many cases, that's the correct insight into the man. But this guy knows she can do shit without him. He used it to prank her. But he's got his puckered lips smooching so far up his own colon about what a catch he is that his narcissistic self-absorbed brain literally couldn't fathom the fact that she'd want to live without such a prize misogynist shoving his slop at her to clean all the time while he contributes jack shit to the efforts. 
Because he's a catch, ladies. <laughs> Sarcasm. You'll appreciate this anecdote from my retired mother. Back in the 80s, when she just started as the first and only woman at her job, she got really fed up with the nudie calendars in the break room. She wasn't getting anyone to agree to take them down by asking, so she decided to go out and buy the raunchiest Playgirl calendar she could find, full of mostly nude and oiled up hunks, and she hung that sucker up directly next to the nudie calendar in the break room. Of course, these pigs all complained, and she told the guys that it had to be fair. It was both or neither. Well, don't you know, the calendars both disappeared pretty quick after that. Yojo says, I'm just annoyed at how profoundly unfunny the husband was. I mean, basic comedy principles, timing and knowing your audience. Can that joke work? Sure, absolutely. Did it have any hope of working in this context? No, not at all. This is basic shit. Pranksters are absolutely insufferable. I want to live in peace. I don't want to be looking over my shoulder every waking moment to watch out for the latest funny thing to blow up on TikTok. And you know what, Arui Wei? You might just have your wish granted because kind of looks like TikTok is dying a little bit with uh, all the music this week being dragged off the platform by very big studios. Who knows what's next to come in the future of TikTok, but hopefully no more pranks that are this stupid and baiting an obvious divorce in the future for idiots stupid enough to do them. But after these people went through the rationale of how someone can convince themselves that it's a good idea, I unfortunately can see where he was coming from now. It is still stupid, it's still the worst thing to do to your wife, I can understand where he's coming from, and I can understand why she is divorcing him. He absolutely deserves to be divorced. Screw that guy. Am I wrong? My friend told me she loves me four weeks before her marriage. My 35 male, friend B, 35 female, just told me that she loves me four weeks before her marriage, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. I want to know if I'm doing the right thing. To give some context, I lost my wife two years ago. I have a five-year-old daughter. I have not dated in the last two years because I have major trauma from losing my wife. I still love her a lot and don't think that I'm ready to move on. I invested all my time in my daughter, who looks exactly like her mother, and my work to keep my sanity for the last two years. I've been friends with B since we were in elementary school. We lived in the same neighborhood growing up and were best friends. She is an awesome person and we were inseparable growing up. The weirdest part was we had completely different personalities. She was very outgoing and always had a lot of friends. I am a big introvert, and B, along with a few friends, was all I needed. B was a serial dater, and I don't remember any time since middle school since she was single. B and I never dated, though. B and I also went to the same college. She never had a stable boyfriend, but just jumped from one relationship to another. I, on the other hand, did not date seriously until I was in my junior year. When I met my wife, she was a freshman, and we hit it off instantly. We fell for each other and spent all of our time with each other. This strained my relationship with B, as I would generally hang out with my wife instead of her. This was the time that B and I slowly started drifting apart. After college, I moved to a different town for my job, and B and I occasionally messaged each other, but nothing beyond that. B attended my wedding, and that was the last time that I saw her. We kept in touch, but mostly by commenting on each other's pictures or keeping each other updated on significant life events. B did reach out to me when my wife passed away, and we talked on a phone call. Last year, B and her fiancé moved to my city. I was still grieving, and both have been amazing support for my daughter and I. My daughter loves dancing, and B helped me enroll her in dancing and gymnastics classes, and sometimes takes her to them. I also became good friends with her fiancé, who is indeed an incredibly good man. My daughter also loves Auntie B, and B sometimes helps me babysit. Last week, B came to my house and asked if we could talk. Her tone sounded serious. She told me that over the last few months, she feels like she started to develop feelings for me and is not sure anymore if she wants to go ahead with the wedding. 
She felt that I had also started developing feelings for her. I told her that I'm not ready for any relationship before I can deal with my mental health, for which I go to a therapist regularly. She tried to convince me that she loved me, we are soulmates, and she felt that we were meant to be together. However, I do not have the same feelings for her. I love her as a friend, but nothing beyond that. We were both emotional, but she said she was glad that we talked about this, and she left after that. She called me that night and told me not to talk about our conversation to anyone. I thought a lot about it, and decided that I would not tell her fiancé about B and I's conversation from last week. I feel like it's their relationship, and I don't have the right to ruin their moment if B decides to go ahead with the wedding. However, I feel guilty that her fiancé does not know anything about this and is going into a marriage where B might not be fully ready for it. Can you guys give suggestions on what I should do in this case? Am I wrong for not telling her fiancé about our conversation? In the comments, K. Bree says, I would tread carefully. B has some commitment issues, and she pops this on you as she is getting ready to make the biggest commitment of her life. She may have true feelings for you, she may just be scared and thinks she has feelings for you. Protect your heart. One of the things I considered in his narrative was that B could have maternal feelings for his daughter and wants the complete package by marrying him. That whatever emotions and affections she is feeling could be tied to her niece as well. She doesn't just become a wife, but a mother too. That could be appealing to some, especially if the bond with her niece is really strong. It sounds like B wanted some kind of commitment from you, and then she would leave her fiancé for you. It's not right to ask that of you. I'm glad you didn't go there. I would suggest that you get some distance from her and live your own life. She isn't treating you or her fiancé well. If she was serious about loving OP, she would have already broken it off with her fiancé. She is hedging her bets. She is awful. Yes, out of respect to OP and her fiancé. She has commitment issues and is getting cold feet about the wedding, and you're probably her exit strategy. I would not lose a good friend over this, but would wait and see what occurs. Don't involve yourself in speaking to her partner. She probably would not permanently commit to you either, but she does sound like someone to have as a friend. I wouldn't even keep this person as a friend. Cut ties completely and move on with life. Hmm, this is a tough one. Yeah, I don't really know about this one. What do you in the comments think of this one? Probably the easiest thing to do in this situation would be what base single that second last comment has said. Don't involve yourself, because if you do involve yourself and she left, she probably wouldn't commit herself to you permanently. Then in that situation, you lose a very good friend, and a marriage gets broken, and you're probably not going to be friends with her fiancé. You would lose two very good people in your life. You wouldn't be wrong for doing it, it's just those would be the consequences of those actions. But then again, something inside me tells me that a lot of the comments of this video are going to say, you should cut her completely out of your life, what she's done is immoral, and is reprehensible. And yeah, I can see where you're coming from with that. I can see why a lot of people wouldn't keep this person as a friend. I think it really just boils down to how involved do you want to get in this situation. Because either choice you make, I don't blame you, because it is quite a tough one. And now, on to the update. A month ago, I wrote a post regarding my friend Bree telling me that she loved me only four weeks before her wedding. The last month has been crazy, and my whole world has been turned upside down. Again, for context, I lost my wife two years ago, and we have a five-year-old daughter. Bree and her fiancé Jason, around 33 male, moved to our town a year ago. And we've reconnected as friends, and they've done a lot to cheer me up during this year and bring my life to normalcy. After Bree told me that she loved me, I told her that I was still not ready to move on as I still miss my wife. She said she understood, and I didn't hear from her or Jason for a few days. The guilt was killing me, as I wasn't sure if I should tell Jason about what she told me. Thanks to everyone who commented on the post, it helped me think the situation through. I finally called B after a few days and asked her to meet me for lunch. 
I talked to her and asked her if she was going to go ahead with her wedding. She broke down and told me she wasn't sure. I told her that she should at least talk to Jason regarding her feelings and not be dishonest with him. I also assured her that I wouldn't say anything to Jason, but I just wanted her to be happy. She said she understood and left. That night, I put my daughter to sleep and was watching TV. Around 9.30pm, I heard a loud knock on my door and it was Jason. I opened the door and he was in tears. He started yelling at me and asking me why I had to steal Bree out of all people. I tried to calm him down, but he just kept on shouting. I was trying to get him to sit down on the bench on our porch. I told him my daughter was sleeping upstairs, but he slowly was getting more and more physical. He punched me in the face, and I was able to push him off. I told him to get out of my house, and he sat in his truck and drove away. I immediately called Bree, and she was crying and didn't sound well on the phone. She told Jason that she could not marry him because she had feelings for me. I was really scared for her after the physical altercation with Jason and told her to gather some clothes and get out of the house. She did that and came to my place. I just didn't feel like she was safe with Jason. I consoled her for almost two hours and was able to get her to sleep. The next morning, we had to call her parents to let them know about what had happened. Bree kept a brave face, but I could see how much she was hurting. Her parents asked her to take a few days off and immediately come back home, and she did take a flight in the evening to go home. Over the next two weeks, the wedding was called off. Bree and I were talking every day, and she was just very exhausted. She talked to Jason a few times and kept on asking her to take more time to think. However, I think Bree just wanted to get out of it and decided to just break it off with Jason. Currently, Bree is staying with us for the last two weeks. She still has a job here and started going back to work last week. I've talked to Bree in detail about what happened. Bree told me that Jason and her were dating on and off for the last four years. Jason is not very career oriented and Bree is very good at her job. She felt that he was a nice and reliable person, but was unsure about him from the start. She felt that she was not getting any younger, and hence they decided to get married. When she heard about my wife passing away, she just felt really bad and wanted to be around me to comfort me. When she got her big promotion, which meant she could work in a corporate office, she immediately chose my city and moved here. Jason also moved here and got a new job. She never had any romantic feelings for me back then. As she started hanging out with my daughter and I, she started feeling the bond that we shared when we were growing up. Except, I was the broken one, and she was taking care of me. She said that she realized that she was enjoying her time with us more than with Jason. She realized she made a mistake with Jason, and what she wanted was right in front of her. Hence, she slowly started thinking about me in that way, and finally told me about it. She knew her relationship with Jason was over the moment that she confessed to me. It's a shitty situation, but I'm glad that she realized that before getting married versus after. As for Jason, I feel bad for him. He's moving back to our hometown and closer to his family. He's currently in their apartment and will move sometime next month. I know a lot of you would be curious if we were dating. We're not dating. I don't think I can date anyone right now, and neither should Bree. She is my friend, and I'm happy that she is staying with us, and plans to be here until everything is sorted out. My daughter loves having Auntie Bree around too, so that's a bonus. Plus, it's really nice to see her slowly get back to normal. Thanks again for helping me during my last post. Cheers. In the comments, Sharp Medicine 7326 says, If neither of you are ready to date... I agree, then why would you move a woman who claims to be in love with you into your house with your daughter, who is likely to get even more attached to a woman living with you? And why the hell would you tell her to stay with you and your child after her ex assaulted you? You didn't know if he was going to find out she was there and show up, thinking that you two were getting together immediately and going crazy? Like, why put your daughter at risk? She could have stayed in a hotel. For all of your sake, she needs to move out immediately. Like yesterday, before you get involved prematurely and ruin everything long term. This is the correct take. Sounds like you're a good dad. Bree needs to move out now before your daughter sees her as a mother figure. 
I agree with other commenters that Brie is getting what she wants, playing happy family with you guys. She needs to learn how to be on her own, and you need to not become dependent on her, nor your daughter. OP replies, One of the comments from the original post from mid-40s mum of three really stuck out to me when I was trying to decide if I wanted to tell Jason myself about what Brie told me. Following is the comment. I would not share your conversation. I'd also find a way to pull away from spending any time with her that also does not tear her out of your daughter's life. Not that she is or ever will replace your dear wife and your daughter's mother, because that's impossible. But your daughter at a young age had already lost her mum, and I'd hate to see her traumatized by having another woman in her life abruptly leave. My daughter really loves having her around, and I also do not want her to lose Brie. I've thought about the pros and cons, and I feel I'm happy that she's staying with us at this point. Uh-oh. Bree's master plan is going to work out in the end. Welp, as long as you're happy, and as long as you have your daughter's slash your best interests in mind, I think you'll figure it all out in the end. I hope for the best for you. Truly. I'd really just try to keep in mind that neither of you are in a state where you should be considering dating, let alone dating each other. Good luck, and sorry that you were put into this situation. Right? She has totally manipulated her way into that house. The next update will be that Bree climbed into his bed one night, and oops, they're pregnant. Then after that, it's divorce, or she cheated or something. Or she'll be ringing Jason the week before the wedding, saying, I think I made a mistake. We should have gotten married. You're an idiot to have her living with you. She needs to find a place of her own, and she needs to stay away from you for a while. Therapy is important. If she wants to be in your life, and with your daughter, she needs therapy. And for the love of God, kick her out. Quote, I don't think I can date anyone right now, and neither should Bree. He really needs to hold on to this thought, because proximity, familiarity, and limerence can be a hell of a drug. And you know what? I'm so sure that it's not all going to come crashing down and he loses her as a friend as well and doesn't screw over the daughter in the meantime. But hey, we'll see what comes of that in the future. It is not the update exactly that I was hoping for, but it was one of those likely possibilities of things that could happen. Though having her move in with you and continue to live with you and your daughter, not the right idea, I don't think. You've seen what her jumping from partner to partner has been like throughout your entire life, OP, and you're now the next continuation, evolution of that jumping from partner to partner. I don't see how this situation is any different. She had a crush on this guy, she lost the crush for this guy, now she has a crush on you. There is no guarantee that she sticks around with you. It feels as though she's gonna burn that bridge when she gets to it, OP. Good luck and put the needs of you and your daughter first. Our next post is by user Main Ganache, titled, Am I the asshole here for being upset my wife, we're currently separated, didn't tell me she was diagnosed with cancer? My parents were well off and worked hard, but they were neglectful towards me. By the time that I was 10, they decided that I didn't need a nanny anymore and that I didn't have parental figures. They spent all of their time and energy at work and didn't have time for me at all. When I met my wife, she was a vibrant, intelligent, caring woman. She would give you the shirt off her back. We spent hours and hours together talking about everything and anything, but it slowly slowed down. She would come home from work and crawl immediately into bed and watch TikToks for the next three hours. She wouldn't engage, would barely do anything, and only did chores sometimes, and ended up paying for someone to do her share. She would always say that she's tired, and then stay up all night sometimes, or sleep for 18 hours. It was awful to see her glued to her phone or her computer, instead of engaging with me. I asked for separation. It was really hard because she cried and begged me not to, and I still loved her, but being with her was like a flashback to my parents. We both knew that separations basically always end in divorce. An old friend of my wife's recently reached out to me and cussed me out. She told me that my wife had cancer and how dare I leave her during a tough time. 
I had no idea she had cancer. I asked my wife why she hid it from me, and she said that I was divorcing her, and she didn't want to guilt trip me into staying or be manipulative. I asked her how long she had known, and she found out three weeks after we separated. I told her she should have told me. I had noticed her hair seemed thinner, and she just seemed frailer overall, but she brushed it off as being stressed. Honestly, I'm really upset that she didn't tell me. Do I have a right to be? Am I the asshole here? Edit, only now did her hair start to thin and she looked weak. She looked obviously ill. For three years before that, she wouldn't get out of bed and alternatively sleep through the weekend and stay up on weekdays. I did all of the chores, but she felt guilty and hired a housekeeper for cleaning. I did all of the cooking. What I saw was a profound disinterest in me. She didn't want to do anything with me. She wouldn't go on a walk with me. She wouldn't go out. She wouldn't read a book. She would just lie in bed watching TikToks. Her daily screen time was 14 to 16 hours. I made doctor's appointments. I cooked food. I tried to get her up. At some point, she just wouldn't even entertain going to the doctor. After years of telling me that there was nothing wrong with her, doctors saying she was lazy, and blood tests showing no issues, and her still lying in bed, I was tired. If we had known that her body was shutting down, of course I wouldn't have left. I just wish she actually went to the appointments I had set up before I asked for a separation. I'm going to help her in any way that I can. In the comments, Salt Version 5918 says, Me, 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 me. She looked sick, but whatever. Me, 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 me. OP replies, I asked what was wrong, and if there was anything that I could do to help. I even dropped off a few meals because she was too tired to cook. Would I have separated if either of us knew she had cancer? No. Oh, you asked two questions and even dropped some food off? What a generous, magnificent man. Sure, poor OP, he did everything in his power, probably gonna win the Nobel Prize. Now, seriously, what's wrong with you? How can you be so self-absorbed? Impossible Peach says, you're the asshole. You noticed her hair was thinner and she looked frail. Clearly, something was physically wrong with her and her doctor was being dismissive. You were her husband, you should have been her advocate when she was too weak to advocate for herself. You were so wrapped up in your emotions and childhood trauma that you neglected your wife. And OP just repeats what they said in the edit, ending with, I'm going to help her any way that I can. Cap OK replies, and yet you didn't advocate for her? You didn't think, no, something else has to be wrong. It sounds like you dismissed her. Leave her the hell alone now that you've made your decision. You separated from her. OP says, she wouldn't go. I made specialist appointments and begged her to go to them. She just refused. I tried offering her therapy and she said she didn't need it. I couldn't drag her to the car. Also from OP, they say, she went to a primary care physician and they drew blood there and sent it to labs. She told me that he said she was just lazy. She said she was being lazy and a bit burnt out. I made specialist appointments. She refused to go to them because the original doctor said she didn't have depression, she was just lazy, and her blood tests came back normal. Only after we separated did she go to a doctor again. I think a lot of these comments are just the classic Reddit reactionary type that we're very used to here. I do think that OP did everything in their power to get her tested and properly looked at, and she refused every step of the way. She just said, oh yeah, you know what? I am lazy. I am burnt out. I'm not going to go get a second opinion. Their relationship dynamic changed into a place that was unacceptable for it to continue in the way that it was, and OP tried everything to get things back to the way they were. OP tried everything to get an explanation, to get some help, and the wife didn't want to cooperate with him. I think you're absolutely not the asshole for this one, and I think you are well within your right to be upset that your wife only went to get re-evaluated three weeks after you separated and then didn't tell you. You are more than deserving to be upset about this one because potentially if it's at a stage that she's going to die from it now and it's untreatable, you're, you deserve to feel upset. 
It's not all about you, 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 like that comment has said. You know, it's an unstoppable force against an immovable object situation. I don't know what more you could have done, and I don't think you're an asshole for what you did do. And now, on to the update. I talked to my wife. I called her and asked if she wanted to talk. She said okay. When I came over, I noticed that nobody had been over in at least a few weeks. My wife is a clean person, so there wasn't a mess, but it was clear that she was doing it on her own. I apologized for everything. I asked her why she didn't tell me about the cancer. She said that she felt guilty because she thought we would go through all the efforts and find out she was just lazy and I would resent her. Then she thought when we separated that she could just go to a few appointments to show that she was physically fine, but then try to change on her own to stop being lazy. She found out that she had cancer. She felt really bad because she hadn't gone to any appointments I had made. She felt guilty because she knew I would come back if I knew, and she didn't want me to sacrifice for her when she had dismissed my concerns for years. She sobbed and said that she really felt like she was just being lazy and tired like before. I asked her what she was talking about. A few times during school, she had these intense periods of being really tired and unable to get out of bed. Her parents took her to a doctor, but there was nothing wrong. It wasn't caused by anxiety, and she didn't feel depressed, just incredibly physically tired. Her parents and doctors dismissed it as laziness. I don't like her parents. I said it didn't sound like laziness, it sounded like a real medical issue. I'm going to help her figure it out, but to me, it sounded like an autoimmune disease or flare-up. I told her that I always believed her. I believed her when she said she was just lazy after three years of trying to get her to a doctor, and I would have believed her if she had been honest with me and told me about what she went through as a kid. She just kept sobbing. I comforted her. After she cried, I checked her fridge for food. There were only a couple of things in the fridge, including some frozen food that I had dropped off before. I asked her if she wanted me to go grocery shopping or come over to my apartment for some food. She chose my apartment. I grabbed a few things for her and I took a laundry basket of dirty clothes to wash. At my apartment, I drew her a bath and cooked dinner for us. She didn't have any clean pajamas, so she wore mine and we had dinner. She just kept saying thank you, and I told her she didn't have to thank me. She's my wife. Of course I'll take care of her through cancer. She said she made me do all of the chores before too, and she didn't want me to go through that again. I told her she was sick and tired, and I can do everything again if she stays honest with me about how she feels and doesn't dismiss it as her being lazy. We ended up cuddling, and she fell asleep pretty quickly. She's been asleep and awake through today and yesterday. She's been a bit clingy to me, and she looks a lot more comfortable. She's probably going to stay in my apartment, so we'll have to figure out how to break the lease on hers. I'm not going to divorce or abandon her. She needs a lot of support. In the comments, Steampunk Harley says, Damn, being dismissed and being told she's just lazy did a real number on her. Poor woman dismisses herself so no one else does. I'm glad you stuck with her and got her to talk about it. It must have been so difficult for the both of you. Hopefully she'll enter therapy and work through that damage that she internalized. She was so afraid of being rejected and called lazy that she tried to go through cancer alone. Screw her parents. And the doctors who shrugged and called her lazy. People in OP's original post were calling him a liar because doctors would never do that. Those people should look up how much more women are dismissed when they have actual real symptoms by doctors who think they're just emotional, lazy, and exaggerating. There is a real effing bias in medicine. I have scleroderma, which is a really bad autoimmune disease that will kill me. I went through doctor after doctor that said it was all in my head before finding a doctor that believed me and tested for autoimmune diseases. So I can verify this is real. Hinky as hell says, A lot of men leave when their wife gets a diagnosis like this. You were struggling in your marriage and already separated, and you are now putting all of that aside to love her through this. 
as a 43 female, married 20 plus years, who has chronic mental and medical illnesses, and a husband loving me through it, this makes me so happy to read. I wish the best outcome for your wife and for your marriage. Jesus Christ, this hits hard. My dad was diagnosed with cancer in October 2022. Before that, both my mum and I noticed that he wasn't looking too good and becoming lethargic. He dismissed it, saying he was just feeling lazy. After he died last year, I realised he was sick for years, but none of us, not even him, knew how sick he really was. Those comments are pretty appalling. They sound like they've never seen a family member deteriorate slowly and dismiss it entirely until it was too late. My dad thought that he had a rotator cuff injury. Turns out his body was riddled with cancer. He died three weeks after his diagnosis. F cancer. I just want to say I have sympathy for every single person in this post, except the me, me, me commenter. Like, was he supposed to physically intuit the problem and then commit a felony assault on his partner to physically force her into the office of a doctor that she had refused to see and gave every indication that she wouldn't have talked to or cooperated with? What the hell are you so mad at this guy for? He didn't know that it was a medical issue. She was telling him it was because she didn't give a shit. We tell people with partners who refuse to participate in the relationship or in life that you have to put on your own oxygen mask first. I always hate commenters who say shit like, you need to make them go to a doctor. Like OP should force them at gunpoint. Lamau? I know. Like, ma'am, how? If begging, bribing, civil discussion, and scheduling a ton of blown-off appointments yourself haven't worked at all, the next steps available to make someone do what you want them to do are pretty much all crimes. For real, I begged my husband to go to the doctor for years. He would tell me all the time that he would go, but never did. Until I left. Until I said that I was tired of watching him literally die a long, slow death from a manageable disease that he was just refusing to manage or get any medical input on. There was nothing else I could do. My 30 female, husband, 34 male, keeps sneaking out in the middle of the night. As the title says, my husband keeps sneaking out in the middle of the night, for basically as long as I can remember, I've gotten up at around 4am or so to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. That's just how my body is. And lately when I do so, I won't find my husband in bed. In fact, I can't find him anywhere. He does have pretty bad insomnia, and sometimes on really bad nights, I would find him in the living room watching TV or playing a video game. Also, it's not every night. It's maybe every other night that he's sneaking out. I'm trying not to let it bother me, but this has been going on for about a month now, and I'm starting to get really annoyed and worried about where he's going, and what he's doing at such weird hours of the night. It happened again the other night, and I stayed up until he decided to come home at 6am. Mind you, I don't know how long he was actually gone, just that he hadn't been there from about 4am until then. I admit I was pretty cranky and annoyed when he got home, and I asked him where he had been. He told me not to worry about it, and let's go back to sleep. I kept pushing, and he said he just goes out for a walk. I wasn't satisfied with that answer, but the conversation kept going back to he just takes a walk to burn any extra energy, or to clear his head when he can't sleep. So I decided to drop it, as I was pretty tired, and had to be up in an hour to go to work anyway. Well, it happened again tonight, slash this morning. I got up to go to the bathroom, and I couldn't find my husband anywhere. Again, I was really annoyed, and I stayed up to see when he would get home. It was 5.35, so that's an improvement at least. When he got home, he looked so sleepy and climbed into bed, and without saying a word, I got out and took my pillow and blankets and came to the couch, where I am now. I know it's petty to give him the silent treatments, but I'm frustrated and I just want to be by myself right now. I can hear him snoring, so I guess his walk worked. I'm not sure what to do now. I'm exhausted, and I honestly just want to know the truth. Should I confront him? I'm not big on confrontation, but at the same time I really want to know what's going on. In the comments, Big Drakal says, 
I mean, he told you he's going for a walk. If you don't believe him, check if it's true. But be aware that this will probably destroy his trust in you if what he does really is just walking. I don't think anyone would be stupid enough to get up in the middle of the night to go do what? Cheating? And then come back to sleep? That would be quite stupid, wouldn't it? The fact that you were not accepting his explanation underlines other problems in your relationship, and he needs to seek help for that insomnia because it will affect his health badly. OP says, I do have PTSD and abandonment issues involving an ex leaving in the middle of the night and not coming back for a week, and he actually was cheating. Not necessarily in the middle of the night, but in general. And when he came home, he broke up with me to be with his side chick. I know it's been over 10 years, but I guess I never really got over that. And I agree he does need to get his insomnia checked. I've been saying that for years. Another commenter says, Info. Do you have any reason to believe that he might be cheating? Can it be possible that he's walking because he needs to burn off some energy so he can go back to sleep? And OP says, I know that logically he might just be going on walks. But I've had an ex in the past leave me in the middle of the night and not return for a week, and then break up with me. And I'm now realizing that I probably have unresolved issues around this. Other than this, I can't think of any other reason. Arion says, Why should OP automatically have to just take his word? Would he do that if the roles were reversed? Even if he is just walking, walking for two plus hours seems excessive. I would absolutely have a conversation with him and explain, though you shouldn't have to unless he's just dense, that odd behavior warrants questioning and he shouldn't be shocked by that. And OP says, and that's basically my issue. Why are the walks so long? Am I crazy for thinking that it's weird to take hours long walks at 4am? It's weird that he didn't mention it until you caught him. Everyone who's saying that you're out of line for being suspicious probably isn't married, because the first time my or my husband's insomnia was bad enough that we left the house on foot in the dark for hours, we would mention something the next morning. Like, wow, crazy, right? But it really helped, so I might keep taking walks. Checking in with your life partner like this isn't controlling, it's for safety. He doesn't need your permission, but if he's outside in the middle of the night, you should know. What if he doesn't come home one morning? You call the cops and report him missing, and all you can say is, I don't know, he says he walks for hours at night, but I have no idea where he went or where he could be. I actually am constantly sharing my location on my phone with my husband, my mum, and my best friend for reasons like this. Your husband can do what he wants without permission, but not without giving you a heads up as a courtesy. I honestly think that he's probably doing something shady, and you should trust your gut. Does he bring his phone? Ask him to show you his Google Maps history if he's set it on. At least you could see where he's going. OP should insist that he take his phone and leave the location tracking on. If his story is legit, and he's out stumbling around the neighborhood half asleep in the middle of the night, somebody should know where he is for safety reasons. I agree. It is not a good story that this man is producing, much more so he's only just now being caught and telling OP that. Why has it never occurred to him before this to be like, hey, I take really long walks around the neighborhood, just thought you should know, instead of, oh shit, you caught me not in the house at 4am, um, yeah, actually, I'm just taking hours of walks every day because I'm an insomniac, and then just never having time to sleep or be a normal person during the day. Because, you know, I'm supposed to be getting like 8 or 9 hours of sleep at night, and I'm just not doing that because instead of sleeping, because of my insomnia, I'm just walking and then never sleeping. What a airtight story. I'm sure this is going to go down well. And now, on to the update. Hello all, I wanted to provide you with an update. Apologies for taking so long to update, my life has been a whirlwind for the past 8 months, and I honestly haven't been in the best mental state. Also, trigger warning. This update touches on topics of depression, drug use, and cheating. So about two months ago, a police car pulled up to my house, and two police officers knocked on my door. They told me that they were there to do a wellness check on my husband's name, because his girlfriend hadn't heard from him in three days, and was worried about him. 
They asked me if I was his sister or what my relationship to him was. I told them I was his wife, and beyond that, I can't even remember what I said. I was in shock. I just remembered them leaving and me closing the door and crying. He was at work at the time, and when he got home, he could tell I was upset. I mean, it was obvious, because every time I tried to speak, I would just start crying again. Eventually, it got to the point that, I guess, he knew that he had to come clean, and he told me everything. So yeah, I found out that he had been cheating on me with an ex-co-worker of his. Not only this, but he had been supporting her and her two kids, because she couldn't hold down a job, and he didn't want them to end up homeless. The reason she couldn't hold down a job is because she was or is into drugs and would go on week-long benders where she just wouldn't show up to work. And he says that about a year ago, she called him out of the blue and cried to him saying that she was about to lose her apartment because her husband was cheating on her and had basically vanished. Ironic, I know. Leaving her with all the bills that had to be paid. And her two kids needed food and new stuff for school. He says that at first it was just financially supporting her and her kids, until he started doing the drugs with her, and that's when things escalated. He told me that he had cut things off with her three days before the police showed up, and that's why they were there doing a wellness check. So I asked him if that was where he was going when he was sneaking out. He said, yes, for the most part. He also said, to be fair, I really would just go on a walk or drive around sometimes. And I know that there are going to be questions about how I didn't notice the missing money. So here is the answer. We have separate bank accounts. He pays for his bills, and I pay for mine, and our joint bills come out of my account, and he pays me back whatever the total is for those bills. And well, he never stopped paying me for those bills, and the household things that were in his name never got shut off, so I never had a reason to think that anything was wrong in that area. I have been so emotionally numb for these past two months, and he has been begging me for about two months to make a decision about our relationship, as in divorce or work things out, because being in limbo is really stressful for him. I honestly just don't want to even put any energy into thinking about the future at all right now. All of my friends and family are telling me to get a divorce, but I don't know, Everything had been great up until about 8 months ago, and our lives are so intertwined. That feels so stupid to say, but I'm basically paralyzed with numbness. I did however make an appointment for couples therapy, so I guess I will see how that goes. He seems up to it. And I just wanted to extend a thank you to all the people that took the time to read this, and the last one. In the comments, Profession Sanity says, I'm so sorry. I hate to add to your pain, but you need to get an STD test now. If he was sleeping with a drug addict, then he could pass something on to you. Please think seriously about seeing a divorce attorney to see about your options. STD test was the first thing that I thought of too, and then also, divorce this man. Your life is not intertwined enough to stay with someone who would only confess because he got caught. Change your couples therapy to personal therapy and find some self-love and self-respect. If your best friend told you this was happening to them, what would you advise them to do? Move on. Everything is always great, right up until it isn't. I've got a friend who is amazing, an absolute catch, well-educated, good job, easy to talk to, but unlucky in love. And this guy is able to score a side chick and somehow be able to convince his wife that he's worth holding on to? How some people can be awesome and stay single despite trying and others seem to have unbreakable relationships despite being utter shit blows my mind. Opie is falling for sunk cost fallacy and ambivalence and fear about unwinding her life. Divorce is scary and sucks even when it's mutually agreed and cordial. Being stuck, bound to someone who doesn't value you, your health, your relationship, and your life together sucks worse. Out of curiosity, did she know that you guys were still together? And OP says, yes, he says he told her he was married. God, this has to be one of the top worst ways to find out that your husband is cheating. The police knock on your door and say that they're there to do a wellness check because his girlfriend is worried? Poor OP. But yeah, couples therapy is not going to fix this. This marriage is over. 
All that matters now is how long it takes to drag herself out of it. Girlfriend knew exactly what she was doing there. This relationship is dead, and there is no point to continue, but I think it's pretty clear that the girlfriend knew what she was doing. She did it to hurt OP. The audacity of him to ask OP to decide what to do with the relationship because he is stressed out? OP was waking up in the middle of the night to a missing husband for who knows how long, but he is stressed? I about popped reading that. The selfishness is just never ending with this one. I lied, cheated, financially supported another woman and her children, did drugs without telling you, but you have to decide what to do about this relationship right now, because not knowing is stressful for me. And that about wraps it up. You know, there's no other update for that one right now. I wish there was, but I highly doubt that Opie is going to come and tell us after all of that. As much as I really want to, I've just got a feeling inside me that they're like, I just want to get as far away from this as possible. Because to me, as the village idiots, I feel like they are just in a world of their own right now. The fact that OP is still with him and hasn't decided whether to divorce yet or not and is considering couples therapy and staying with him after all of that, they're not of right mind currently. And I wonder if when they do snap out of it and come to their senses and divorce this man, if they would actually do an update, because I have high doubts about that one. This marriage was already six feet deep, but he plunged himself into hell when he said, Oh yeah, I also joined in on the drug habit. <laughs> it was such a heckin' fun time cheating on you with her that I decided to take up drugs too, because that's really cool. And let's not mention how badly this is going to go for her kids. As it's all spiralling downwards, I hope that they have family that can take them in, because, oh, oh boy, not a good time. Annex post is by user Pig in a Blanket, titled, I have a feeling that my mum won't like the fact that my fiancé isn't taking my name. I got engaged about four months ago, and I asked my fiancé if she's taking my name. She decided she wants to keep her name. For me, it doesn't matter. Her name is her name. Why should I have a say? However, my mum will be a different story. My mum is very traditional. She kept telling me that the woman takes her husband's name. She also told me that if my fiancé doesn't take my name, then what last name will my future children have? The answer for me is obvious. They will have mine. You might be wondering why this is a concern for me. Well, here's some backstory. My fiancé's parents went through a very rough divorce when she was little. It was so bad that her mom went back to her maiden name. My future mother-in-law raised my fiancé and my future sister-in-law to be strong and independent. She raised both of them by herself. With me knowing this, I didn't want to twist my fiancé's arm to take my name. I know that she and her sister have been mentally scarred by their parents' divorce. I know that. My mum doesn't know that, because she won't understand. I have a feeling that when she finds out, she'll flip. In the comments, Sandmint says, quote, The answer for me is obvious. They'll have mine. And have you confirmed this with your fiancé? If it's not obvious that your children will have a completely different last name than their mother, you need to have a conversation about whether she's okay with that or if she wants to double barrel. If names don't matter, would you be comfortable if you both added each other's last names for family and legal purposes, but publicly went by your birth last names? OP replies, We had this conversation. She's completely fine with our future children having my last name. Before we became officially engaged, we had several discussions about our future children. That was one of the first topics when it came to that subject. Linny Pixie says, Where I live, I can't even legally take my husband's name. It's a lot easier for the government's papers and all that. You can take it socially, but not legally. Anyway, I kept my name. I would have kept it anyway, but my kids have taken their father's name. My logic is that I birthed them, so the filiation is automatic. The least I could do was give them my husband's name so he would have a strong filiation too. That's an interesting way to think of it. I don't want any children myself, so my opinion doesn't really matter, but I always thought that it would feel weird to give birth to a child and then have it have a different last name than mine, like doing a project and watching someone else put their name under it. 
in a hardly comparable way, you know. But I really like your perspective, and it's true. You birthed that child. You already have a deep connection, deeper than any name could ever be. And allowing the father to create his own, more or less permanent connection is a good way to bond. I feel like I'm talking about babies like things here. Which is not my intent, but I hope you get me. McMurmel says, It's time for you to put on your big boy pants and start standing up to your mother. Is she going to put her two cents in and influence you on other matters going forward? It is none of her business. That means you don't discuss or defend the decision or justify. There is no reason she even needs to know at this point. When she finds out and brings it up, you say, Mom, it is none of your business and don't ever mention it again to me or my wife. That's what you say. End of story. If she starts in, you get up and leave. On the phone, you say it and hang up. You don't want to start off with marital problems. Keep your mother out of your personal business and marital decisions. This, Opie, you need to set up hard boundaries with your mum now before the wedding. Don't let her wiggle her way into you and your fiancé's decisions. She will try, but it is your responsibility to handle your mum. Quote, My fiancé doesn't take my name, and then what my last name will my future children have? The answer for me is obvious, they will have mine. Excuse me? You don't get to make that decision all by yourself. How about since she wants to keep her last name, you take hers, and the kids take hers as well? OP replies, I can see how this may seem wrong. Before we got officially engaged, we talked about our kids' last names. I told her that I was completely fine with them having her last name, hyphenating the last names, or having mine. We both decided that they will have mine. We knew that this would be a hot topic and wanted to get the discussion talked down first. She wanted the kids to have my last name because of me being the father. Poor wording on my end. And now onto the update. Yesterday I posted that my mum was going to flip about my fiancé not taking my name. Well, I had a talk with her. I told her that my fiancé made the choice to not take my name. I told her it's her decision, and I should have no right to influence her to take my name. She freaked out a little. I'm going to be honest, it was a little frightening. Once she calmed down, she accepted it. We hugged it out. I'm close to my mum. We've been through a lot together. The last thing I ever want to do is make her upset or break her heart. She understood that my fiancé has her reasons, which I did not disclose to her the actual reasons. She knows that my fiancé is a very strong and independent person. She's seen it. It was a long talk, but it worked out. To those who called me out on my kids taking my name, I had poor wording on the original post, and that's my fault. I want to clear things up on this. Before my fiancé and I got officially engaged, we talked about this subject. I told her that I'm completely fine with our kids having her name, hyphenating our names, or having mine. She wanted the kids to have mine. Is it too early to have this type of conversation? Some of you said that it was, and some of you said that it wasn't. Both of you are correct, in my opinion. Some of you commented that we should take each other's names. And honestly, that's not a bad idea, but I have my own little business with my last name being in the name of the business, and she's a well-respected dog trainer at her workplace. It wouldn't work out, but the suggestion was valid, and I appreciate that. Thank you all for the advice to man up, suggestions, stories, and opinions. I didn't respond to all of you, but I read all of your comments. It was eye-opening to me. Thank you. In the comments, Virtual Choir Boy says, While I'm glad that you were able to work it out with your mom, there's something that you mentioned that I feel needs addressing. Quote, Last thing I ever want to do is make her upset or break her out. You're getting married. Your mom has her ideas of how your life should proceed. Your fiancé and soon-to-be wife will have different ideas. At some point in the future, those ideas will be in conflict and both of them will be upset about it. You will likely have to choose a course of action, support your mum, or support your partner. As a general rule, if you want to stay married, support your partner. Now, obviously there can be situations where your partner is in the wrong, but that's something you address with her privately, and then both of you go back to your mum to set the record straight. 
The thing is, if you start supporting your mum over your partner because you don't want to upset your mum, it's going to cause marital problems. And if you doubt me, go spend some time over in the divorce subreddits and just know mother-in-law for confirmation. Oh, and staying out of it never works. It makes both assume that you're supporting the other person. As Neil Peart from Rush wrote in Free Will, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Yup. That one line just told me that OP doesn't get it still. This isn't just about the last name, but setting a precedence. The only people's opinion who matter in a marriage are the married couple's opinions. Our parents' opinions can matter about other things, but not about your marriage or what last name your spouse's takes. These don't affect them. Maybe moving might be the one thing I would say parents can voice their opinions on, particularly if grandkids are involved, and there's the exception that grandparents need to see their grandkids. I hope it turns out well, but I doubt it since it's clear this mom can't keep her opinions to herself. I'm seriously concerned for your fiancé. Your mother has absolutely no reason or right to react that way to something that has no bearing to her life. These decisions are for you and your fiancé to make for your lives. You and your fiancé are adults. The decisions you make as for your lives have nothing to do with her. She had the opportunity to live her life the way that she wanted. She doesn't get to control or manipulate you into living your life her way too. If this is how she's behaving now, I can begin to imagine the uphill battle that your fiancé has. Quote, the last thing I want is to make her upset or break her heart? Screams of enmeshment. Your mother is an adult and responsible for managing her own emotions. It's not your job to make her happy. Teal Housewife says, So, my husband and I got married almost 15 years ago, and I kept my maiden name. It's an unusual last name, and me, my dad, and his parents were the only people left in the family with that name. My husband was totally cool about it. In fact, when I got pregnant a few years later, he suggested we give our kids my last name too, since he has several brothers who passed the family name to the kids. It was so thoughtful of him, and it made me really happy. I called my grandparents to let them know that we were getting a new generation of our last name, and they were so happy. It was the last conversation I had with my grandpa. He passed away a short time later, before our daughter was born. Unfortunately, when my husband mentioned it to his parents, they flipped. Apparently, they'd been holding a grudge against me for not taking my husband's last name, and this was the final straw. My father-in-law emailed my husband to tell him he needed to remind me who wears the pants in the family. My husband's reply was, We both wear the pants? I'm wearing pants right now. There were threats of disowning. It got so bad, even my family started to think that we shouldn't give the baby my last name. It was upsetting, but we both held firm, and when they realized their tantrum wasn't working, they got over it pretty quickly. We did end up giving our daughter two middle names, and the second one is my husband's last name. So, he's still in there. But that was our idea, and our choice, and everyone learned to live with it. I'm just lucky that my husband has always had my back. We've been a team since day one. Toots NYC says, I think the OP did stand up for his wife. He did good. He identified a problem accurately. He told mum himself in advance to control any negative pushback from mum to fiancé and was firm that he supported his fiancé. He gave mum an opportunity to have her reaction and then back down from it. Yeah, I don't get why everyone is so against him. He acted correctly and protected his fiancé. Some seem hyperfixated on the the last thing I want is to make her upset statement taking it literally, despite OP going ahead with a decision while knowing that it was likely to make her upset. Am I the asshole here for not telling my girlfriend I was going to break up with her if she went on vacation with male friends? Basically, my girlfriend went on vacation with her male friends. I told her this made me uncomfortable and I didn't want her to go. By the way, she used to hook up with one of them before she met me. She told me that it would be fine and that they're like brothers to her. I already made the decision to break up with her there and then, but I wanted to get my stuff from her place before anything and I figured I should do that while she's gone. 
I also didn't want to break up over text or call, so I waited for her to come back. I picked her up when she came back, dropped her off, and gave her the key to her place back and broke up. She started crying and figured out it was because of the vacation. She kept saying that nothing happened. I told her she knew that I wasn't comfortable with this, and she still went. She mentioned that I should have said that I'd break up with her if she went, and that if she knew, she would never have gone. I told her I didn't want to be controlling and threaten her with ending the relationship. We kept going back and forth over this for a while. Edits, a lot of y'all are assuming an awful lot here. Most of you are cool, but to give you a bit more context, one, she never actually introduced me to these friends. Even though I mentioned I wanted to meet them, she kept making excuses. Two, she never told me she used to hook up with her friend. I only found out because I found an old picture of them kissing when she was showing me some old travel pics. And three, I was okay with their friendship until now. This was just too much for me. Most of y'all are cool, but I swear some of y'all act like cheaters don't exist. Did she cheat on me? Who knows? But at this point, I was sick of doubting. In the comments, did she invite you on this vacation? And OP says, she didn't really invite me. I tried to invite myself, but I couldn't go due to work. Was it just her and the guys or others too? OP says, her other friends couldn't make it, including female friends. Would she have been okay if you went on vacation with a bunch of girls, including one that you used to hook up with, without her? And OP says, I don't know, I would never put her in that position to begin with. DD Packer says, quote, she used to hook up with one of them, she told me they are like brothers to her. Banjo playing softly in the distance. All I needed to read was that first sentence, get out my dude, don't look back. I told her I was uncomfortable and didn't want her to go. She goes anyways? A buddy of mine went on vacation with some buddies. A female friend of theirs went also, and her and my friend used to have a friends with benefits thing going on. Guess what they did on the vacation? Yes, they banged. He had a girlfriend that didn't come, and she had a boyfriend that didn't come. Not the asshole. Yeah, they absolutely banged, and she was gonna bury it a hundred percent. She's sad because she got caught. She would have been mad if she didn't do anything. Not the asshole. Also, the fact that she claims she wouldn't have gone if she knew that you'd break up over it doesn't make it better. It makes it worse. It shows she doesn't care how it affects you unless it becomes a problem for her too. That is zero integrity, and that is not long-term partner material. It should not take you leaving or thinking about leaving for her to not dismiss your feelings. That's asinine. What kind of consequences are we talking about? If it's just huffy for a week, I'm going. But if you're going to break up and inconvenience me, ah, then I'll stay. I just need to weigh up the cost benefit of your feelings before caring about them. Not the asshole. You enforced your boundaries, and the consequences for boundaries don't always need to be explained, as all situations are different. Exactly. This is the true definition of boundaries. You expressed what you're not willing to put up with, and then followed through. If y'all have different values, so be it. Not the asshole. You'd be toast too if it was the other way around. Yeah, all signs point to these two banged. I genuinely don't think there's any ifs, buts, or doubts about it. I think OP made the right choice in this situation because there are just too many coincidences along the way. Oh, no, yeah, your female friends just happen to all be too busy. They're all just at work when we made this vacation. Oh, yeah, there's just so many roadblocks getting in the way of me introducing you to my friends, especially one that I used to hook up with that I'm not going to tell you about and wasn't going to tell you about. <laughs> Weird, huh? And yeah, we just happened to have booked it also at the same time as you couldn't do it because of work. Damn, crazy coincidence that. Not the asshole OP. She deserved to be broken up with even before the vacation, but I respect you for doing it after and in her face. That's a quite respectable thing to do. Thumbs up. And now, on to the updates. Hello everyone. My post got a lot of attention. I responded to a few comments and even edited it, so I figured I should post an update for you all. Her male friend reached out to me on Instagram, the one that she used to hook up with. He asked if I was dating my ex, and I told him what happened. 
He actually apologized. He said he didn't know that we were still dating. He said that my ex was talking mad shit about me, and he was confused. Apparently, my ex-girlfriend told him that we broke up months ago, and they've been hooking up regularly since. Yes, including the trip. The guy even showed me some pictures of the two of them kissing during the trip, so that explains why she never wanted me to meet them. So all my suspicions were correct. The guy actually seemed like a decent guy. He apologized a lot for what he did. I don't hold any resentment towards him, and I'm glad that I got confirmation that I made the right decision. So to all of you who supported me, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And one last comment to some of you. My insecurity kept me from wasting any more of my time. In the comments, Tersa78 says, What made him randomly reach out to you now? And OP says, He said my ex was talking shit about me. He was confused because he thought that we had been broken up for months now. He reached out to me because he wanted to know exactly what happened between us. Thank God for the bro looking out for you. Didn't have to be nice or message you at all, but did it because he knew that it was effed up of her. Why did that help? OP broke up with his girlfriend way before this guy messaged him. All this guy did was confirm that his ex-girlfriend was a piece of shit. And OP says, It did help a bit. It gave me some peace of mind. To be honest, there were some doubts in my head if I did the right thing or not. Some comments in my previous post made me doubt my decision a bit. While it still hurts, I can at least move forward with zero doubts in my mind. What really pissed me off about the post before was people so desperate to put at least some blame on him that they tried to blame him for not communicating, even though he plainly said, I am uncomfortable with you going along with people you have hooked up with before. The compulsive need to at least dump partial blame on the man to reduce blame on the woman means some actual drivel comes from these people's mouths. OP replies, Something that I also noticed is that people acted as if I said, you can't be friends with guys or exes. I never even said that. They acted as if I wanted her locked in a cage with no interaction at all with males. Ah yes, brothers, the kind you sleep with. Yeah, the fact that his ex never wanted him to meet these friends was a red flag. Thank God for that bro looking out for him. He's a real one, ish. I got the feeling that he was more asking for his own sake, to see if she was lying to him, but I guess it worked out for the OP in the end anyway. Oh yeah, he just realized he was the side dude and wanted confirmation. I actually think that this was the most sensible move to make. I don't like that, okay, I'm gonna do it. No drama, no ultimatums, just consequence of your actions. It doesn't matter if you are right or wrong, whether she cheated or not, just the lack of respect. Their relationship was already over at that point in his head. Nothing good would have come from staying in it. He would have always wondered if she had been faithful to him or not, and it would have killed him inside. Ending things the way that he did was stone cold, but it was the best course of action. He had no malice for her. He still picked her up from the airport, but they were done the moment she decided to get on that plane. The fact that the friend called him and confirmed his suspicions was icing on the cake. Yeah, really no winning in a situation like this. I feel like she just massively overstepped his boundaries and didn't care. And then she makes up the excuse of saying, Oh, well, if you were going to break up with me, I wouldn't have done it and I would have respected you. I think she should have just taken a hint and communicated with him and been like, you know what, as my partner, we're going to work things out. I'm going to be real with you. Maybe you can blame OP a little bit for not communicating properly, but I think OP did their job communicating, and it was up to their partner to pick up on that personally. Disgusting that the cheating was going on for so long, but that's just life sometimes. Some people are just pieces of shit. Our next post is by user throwaway 8 titled Came Home and Significant Other is Gone. Long time lurker and occasional commenter of this great sub, but I'm using a throwaway account because my paranoia is at an all time high right now. I have great OPSEC, but also haven't seemed to need it because my wife works all the time and we do have a great sex life, so I would be shocked if she even suspected I was doing what I was doing. That's why I'm losing my shit right now. 
I come home from work yesterday, and usually my wife gets home about 30 minutes after I do. When I realized it's getting late, I called and got no answer. I check our room and her things are gone. She left the house completely untouched, just took all of her clothes, but left no notes. I can't get in touch with her through phone, email, her friends won't answer. She must know, right? Which, why wouldn't she ask me? Who finds out and just leaves? Is it possible she doesn't know and left for someone else? In the comments, a deleted user said, Let her go. You are effed. She will contact you with your next instructions. Likely will be served soon. And OP says, Didn't she technically abandon the home? How can she serve me? At 10.56pm, around 9 hours later, OP came back and made a post that was removed by the moderator. She's an effing sociopath. She's known for months. She's slept with me and smiled in my effing face for months. Be careful. Comment from a deleted user says, She for sure knows. OP replied, I know now she knows. She has known for months. She's been more deceitful about knowing than I have about doing it, and maybe that's why I'm so effing angry. I can't even have interest in my affair partner now. Fah. Another user told OP to own their actions. OP replied, I am taking ownership, but I'm posting on a sub for adultery. Not like I'm claiming that it was okay for me to cheat, I just happen to think that cheating isn't the only shitty thing you can do to someone. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is that logic? That really caught me off guard. What is this? <laughs> What's going through this guy's head? He's out of line, but he's not wrong. OP continued to spiral July 8th, 11.43pm, and says, This is not what I want. How do I not go through this? I wouldn't have done it if I thought that she'd find out. Sorry I'm just desperate. I need to fix it because, fuck, I need to know how she even found out. A deleted user responded to this and says, Okay, what did you think would happen if and when she found out? Were you disappointed that she didn't scream and cry and play the pick-me game? She found out and decided that it was a deal-breaker on her end. You got off easy. No arguing, screaming, and crying. No therapy or marriage counseling to sit through and pay for. Probably took those months to stash some cash, find a place, or another guy. I don't think there is any fixing this. And OP replies, maybe a little. I don't know why I felt that way, but yeah, I guess I wanted to see some kind of reaction. I know it doesn't make sense, but it's just how I feel. She makes most of the money, so that's another effing kick in the nuts. I'll basically have to ask her for some kind of support to keep living the kind of lifestyle that we've been living. I wish she would fight me. Seems like she's willing to let everything go, including her own money, just to avoid me, and it's making me feel like I don't know her. July 9th, the next day, OP provided more details, and said, I did have great OPSEC. I found out what happened now from her mum. One of my wife's interns works a second job at the hotel where the affair partner and I met, three towns away, but my wife had a picture of us on her phone screen, so she recognised me. After that, I guess she called my wife the next time we were there, and my wife stopped in to confirm, and then left. What's getting to me is that this was in March. I never saw any changes in her. Edit, I guess after writing this, my OPSEC wasn't great. Shouldn't have stayed at the same place more than once. I guess my commentary on this is that you shouldn't have cheated OP, but you're getting the consequences of your actions now. And yeah, it was really unlikely that something like this was going to happen, but that's life. Life bites you in the ass sometimes. You got to live the high-life thrill of cheating on your wife, and she gets to live the high-life thrill of completely disappearing on you. I'm genuinely shocked that you actually got answers about how she found you, but hey, maybe you can take this opportunity to do better for the next wife that you're going to cheat on. How great, that's going to be so good, OP. And now, on to the update. I had no idea this would get so much input, but it has helped and I appreciate it. I've been here a while, but this was my first time posting, and it's helped me vent and process, so thank you. Also, if I'm being honest, I'm sure that the attention or engagement has helped me cope a little. I finally talked to my wife this afternoon. 
I've been in our house since Thursday night by myself, pretty much clueless as to what was going on with her until her mother, who she has very little contact with, reached out to me. I was caught. I have been caught since March. Wife texted me today, saying she had intended to contact me through a lawyer and just let the divorce do the talking. But since her mother decided to contact me, she would answer any questions I had if I had a desire to speak to her. Clearly I did. I asked her why she stayed around after she knew and how she just lied to me like that. She said it wasn't her intention, but she shut down to figure out what she needed to do regarding our relationship and herself. At the end, she said something like, she realized she still loves me, but doesn't respect me. And she said she thinks that I love her, but don't respect her either, so we should go our separate ways. She already got her job to move her to the city that she's been asking me to move to for a long time now, and said she'd like to sell me her half of the house if I want it, and if not, we can list it. But I guess our lawyers will handle that paperwork, and I still have no idea if I want our house without her in it. I'm glad I talked to her, but I'm sad at how moved on she is. She did cry a little, but then stopped. I asked for therapy, and she said I should have asked for that when I realized I had impulse control issues. I've been drinking for 48 hours now, and sorry for the rant. I don't think it's losing her that's hurting, but losing like this. In the comments, OP replied to a now deleted post and says, I don't know for a fact that she wasn't cheating. I had no reason to think that she was, but until she found out in the most unlikely way, she had no reason to think that I was either. A deleted user said, I'm truly sorry for all involved in this, but I just have to say, she made a badass exit. That sounds like some Beyonce shit. And OP replied, Okay, I could understand her leaving, but her leaving without a word is almost not human. Nothing badass about it. It's not who she is either. She's sweet, and that's why I love her. Her being cold like this is not going to make me want or respect her more. I'm pretty sure the fact she's divorcing the guy makes it clear she doesn't give a shit what he thinks of her. The level of delusion is ridiculous. The audacity of cheaters never ceases to amaze. The way he talks about her there sounds like he believes she should not have any agency or thoughts of her own. It sounds like he believes that he owns her. She's sweet and that's why I love her. AKA, I thought she'd just let me break her heart. Her being cold like this isn't going to make me want or respect her more. Maybe you should have respected her first. What a shit heel, and I'm proud of his ex for walking away. She owes him nothing, and now he gets to suffer the consequences of his own cruelty and disregard for her. It's because he doesn't love her. He loves what she could do for him. But I don't want my wife that I cheated on that makes more money than me. Ignore the fact that she left me, ignore the fact I need her to support my lifestyle and not the other way around, her behavior makes me not want or respect her. God, what an effing rat. Cheats for months, if not years, pats himself on the back about how well he's cheating, and then plays the victim when his wife silently leaves and doesn't give him the dramatic fight that he wants. I think he thought that she would cry and ask him why so that he could blame her. She would then be humbled and fall over backwards to keep him while never feeling good enough for him, or something like that. This is disgusting and probably true. Well, that was a wild read. The mental jujitsu that this guy has to do to make her the bad guy would be exhausting to anyone with a normally developed sense of morality. Quotes, Okay, I could understand her leaving, but her leaving without a word is almost not human. It's this line that really effing gets me. Cheating on your partner and essentially bragging about how good you are at it online and then saying that is beyond delusional. Not only bragging about how good your OPSEC is, but then getting caught without realizing LMAO? <laughs> Can't get over him thinking that her exit was just as deceitful as him cheating. He thought it was more deceitful. What a piece of trash human. Seriously, calling her a sociopath because she was able to act like everything was normal for a couple months? How much longer had he been doing the exact same thing? What a muppet. 
I listened to my brother and I shouldn't have. I met my ex-wife Kelly when we were in college when she asked me for some notes one day. We had been sitting next to each other for weeks without a word until then. We started dating and got serious pretty quickly, which upset my younger brother Robert. Robert was about 16 when I started dating Kelly, and you could tell that he had a bad crush. She was always nice and took it in stride. After Robert left home and got into college, I let him move in with us. Kelly and I had been together about three years, living together for two. We all had a good relationship. Kelly started complaining that things were misplaced soon. One of her earrings would disappear, her panties, sometimes it was socks. She was under a ton of stress, changing medications, so we both chalked it up to her ADHD giving her an issue, until one day, I caught my brother with a pair of her missing panties. We found everything he stole. We kick him out, and he goes to live with my parents again, and begs for forgiveness, and decides to go to therapy. It takes about five years, but we all decide that it was water under the bridge, Kelly included. Robert had a hard life growing up. He said that it was all acting out. Late 2022, I received an anonymous email that Kelly was cheating on me. He knew dates that she was out of town, names of co-workers, and everything. They gave me no photographs, but knew enough details that I was sure they were telling the truth. Kelly fought me on it, denied it, begged for marriage counselling, but cheating is a solid deal breaker for me. Robert came to stay with me as my emotional support while Kelly was there. Kelly had asked me to get him to leave multiple times, stating that he was watching her and making her feel uncomfortable, but all I said were things that I'd rather not repeat about her, not being trustworthy. The day she left was last April. She said to me that it was going to turn out to be my perverted brother, and that if it is, she hopes that I feel every ounce of pain that I just put her through. My brother has apparently been racked with guilt and confessed last weekend. He told me in front of our parents. I couldn't say anything. I just walked out and went home. I turned my personal phone off, and I've just been walking in a daze. I go to work, come home, I watch TV, and I go to bed. I can't tell you what I've eaten for the past week, or what I've watched. My dad came by to talk to me tonight, and he wants me to talk to my brother, tell him that it's going to be okay, and that we can work through it. I turned on my personal phone for the first time to see hundreds of texts from my brother. I just want to reach out to Kelly and beg for forgiveness, and ask her if we can start over. In the comments, Lush Flower says, not to kick you when you're down, but your soon-to-be ex-wife warned you. And it sounds like your parents support him still, even though he's blown up your relationship twice and terrorized your wife for years. You all made choices, and now you're gonna have to live with them. You should tell her that she was right, so she can have validation. But don't expect understanding, forgiveness, or reconciliation. She's better off away from you and your toxic family, especially that psycho stalker brother of yours. You should have trusted and listened to Kelly. She's better off and you should not bother her. Well, you'd best go powder your poor, poor brother's ass, make him feel better, and it's gonna be okay, and keep feeling sad and in a daze. You had already caught him with her panties and other stolen items. Why you wouldn't believe her the second time is beyond me. Leave Kelly alone. She doesn't need anyone's lame apologies. It only took you 30 minutes to throw away what you had and a year for your brother to admit what he did. Your parents raised a predator. Literally, they said that it's okay to be a predator. Mummy and daddy still love you, even if you violate and stalk women and destroy their lives. And leave Kelly the F alone, your piece of crap brother has done enough. If you ever loved her, never put her anywhere near your family again, and that includes you. Yep, I pretty much fully agree with everything the comments have said here, OP. You have done way too much damage in this situation. I think you'd only be putting yourself and her through hell if you were to reach out and try to mend things because <laughs> it's incredible that this anonymous email can just provide no receipts, no evidence to sh prove that the cheating allegations were true. Just, source, trust me, bro. And you're like, sounds good enough to me. You say jump, I say how high. 
I think your ex-wife deserves her peace, and you deserve to sit this one out and think about what you've done. If this were Am I the Arsehole, I'd say that you're the arsehole for this one, mate. Grow up. And now, on to the update, titled, I Contacted My Ex-Wife. So I vented on Reddit about finding out that my brother faked that my wife had an affair on a business trip. I've been in a daze since I found out. I kept reading that everyone said leave Kelly alone, but I sent her an email to where we had been communicating about little things that popped up, and then I went to bed. I apologized, told her that I know that I can't mend things, but that she was right, and that Robert was out of my life, and probably my parents too. I didn't expect an email back, but I received one and it was massive. It was filled with a lot of personal things that I don't want to repeat. She said she understood the desire to listen to that email, but that she wasn't even able to defend herself, that I just gave her time to get out and then immediately moved Robert into our home where she watched him intentionally keep us from communicating as she was forced to leave. She said she would have done anything, let me talk to her co-workers, check her geo-tracking, but Robert kept a permanent buffer and I allowed it, belittling and mocking her along with him whenever she attempted to talk to me. She thanked me for the closure on this chapter of her life and she wished me the best, but she asked me not to contact her again, ever. After the year and three months she said she endured, she isn't the same woman that I knew. She asked me to set the record straight with any former mutual acquaintances, but she honestly never wants to hear from any of them either, and to tell them so. She told me that I poisoned that well when I accused her of what I did, and it was the most bitter and isolating experience she has ever dealt with, and that she genuinely feels nothing for anyone in her former life, including me. She also told me cutting out Robert is a great idea, but don't cut them off trying to get her back, or even in her good graces, because she's moving overseas on a fiancé visa to try things out with her new fiancé. She said they've only been dating for 8 months, but she's never felt this way about anyone in her life, and that she thinks he might be her soulmate. She told me to learn from my mistakes with her, and to find someone to love more than I loved her. It crushed me to see the word soulmate, she used to tell me all the time that she thought I was her soulmate. I called my dad yesterday morning after reading the email, and I told him that I'm not going to comfort Robert. He ended my marriage through lies, made me a liar to all of my friends, and isolated and hurt one of the most loving, loyal people on the planet who tried so many times to help him. My relationship with Robert is over. I told him that if he has a problem with that, my relationship with him is over too. My dad told me he understood truly how bad it was once I broke it down that way. I'm going to put in a transfer request at work tomorrow. I live on the west coast. Maybe I'll head to the east coast. I'm going to get a change in scenery, a therapist, and figure myself out. In the comments, StarryDust4444 says, I'm sure you're feeling pretty down about this response but it sounds to me like she got her life together after you pulled the rug right out from under her and is on the right path. I'm happy for her and I'm glad that she found someone who will treat her with the respect that she deserves. You, however, need to do some serious soul searching and ask yourself why you were so quick to believe these lies. I'm sure some simple replies to the email asking for additional details would have caused the whole scheme to fall apart, and why you didn't respect your own wife enough to listen to her. You've got a lot of work to do on yourself before you even think of embarking on another relationship. All of this, plus I hope that he has the decency to do just what she asked for. He tells every member of his family and all his friends that it was a lie concocted by his brother, and that he, OP, was an idiot for believing his brother over his wife. There are two people at fault here, and that's OP and his brother, and their friends and family should know that. I'm glad she found her soulmate. I hope that she can heal from the pain that you put her through. The saddest part is that you would have still thought she had cheated had your psycho brother not confessed. You never believed her word or gave her a chance to defend herself. You dragged her name through the mud, and she was living in isolation while her community believed her to be a trash person. 
You were happy in burning down her world, and this is part of your guilt. It's not her responsibility to help you assuage your guilt and conscience. She was kind enough to give you closure, even though you didn't deserve any of it. Your life will probably suck for a while, and karma coming back to receive its due is always a possibility. For now, try to work on what led to this. If you find yourself in a future relationship, tread with caution and work on communication and genuine trust. I'm glad that your ex is happy. She deserves to be loved, cherished, and given her place as a partner. That includes safety and security, which you failed to provide. Good luck, OP. I'm happy that Kelly found someone who was safe for her. I couldn't imagine having your partner turn on you like that with someone who terrorized you. OP should have immediately started questioning his brother the moment that Kelly brought it up. The fact he was so blinded when she pointed it out kind of shows how he really felt about her. I hope the new guy is safe. Leaving the country on a fiancé visa for someone you haven't known long isn't super safe. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she lied about the fiancé, given that she called him her soulmate, which is something she had previously called OP, I think she made that part up to keep OP from thinking he had a chance of getting her back, and maybe to twist the knife a little. Quote, It crushed me to see the word soulmate. She used to tell me all the time that she thought I was her soulmate. I wish that people like this would have the clarity and introspection to be crushed by the realization that their shitty actions were so impactful so as to have this tremendous effect on their partner. They didn't move on or change in isolation, but rather as a direct effect of what you did. Even beyond the cheating allegation, he essentially put her through abuse and kept her within the sphere of her abuser for years. The girl is better off without all of them in her life. Exactly. Example, I had an abusive ex and I left him while I still felt love for him because I knew leaving him was the right thing to do. He was so shitty in just the single month after I left him that he killed the remaining love that I had left. And in a sense, that was definitely for the best because it helped me move on. But goddamn, they really don't understand that. Dude, how do you expect someone to still love you no matter how you treat them? They genuinely believe they ought to be forgiven for literally any pain they cause, and that there's always a way back, that their actions never have the power to destroy affection. That's not how it works, bud. I guess in this situation, good riddance that uh, she's moving on with her life. Whether the fiancé in the other country is real or not, the one that brought it up really has me questioning that now, but for future reference, I will remember that that is a great out to get someone off your case, being like, oh, I have found my soulmate. Now you have no reason to come after me. Thank God, leave me alone. But as we see time and time again in these stories... Some people are just insane in the membrane and do not care. You can say anything you want to them and they'll still be like, so we're getting back together, right? I know you're married and have two kids now, but like, come on, it wasn't that bad that I abused you. I genuinely believe that there are people that delusional out there that think, oh, one single situation has changed. Oh yes, I got a confession from my brother that he was the maker of all this evil all along. This changes everything. Now I can go back to the life that I had before. I'm going to forget all the bridges that I burned along the way. How people can live in such delusional states like that, I will never understand. But it gives us good content, and I'm here for it. Our next post is by user Comparison Adept 9322 titled... Am I the asshole here for not allowing my in-laws to see my daughter after they gave her quote-unquote medication? I know how the title sounds, but please bear with me. Throw away for obvious reasons. I, 24 male, and my wife, 24, recently had our daughter in July. She is the best thing to ever happen to my wife and I, and we couldn't be more thrilled to have our little bundle of joy. She recently got sick while staying with her grandparents, my in-laws, while my wife and I took a trip for work. For context, my in-laws are really big into LifeWave slash X-39, 
It's some patch that supposedly helps regrow stem cells by reflecting light rays back into your body, allowing your body to produce more stem cells to fight off diseases and sicknesses. I'ma stop you right there. Elon Musk's goddamn Neuralink sounds more reliable than that, and I'm not putting that thing in my head. My skin is already crawling. If you ask me, it sounds like snake oil, and my wife agrees, calling it a pyramid scheme. The only way to get said patches is by spending well over a thousand dollars, and then you're tasked with selling the patches yourself. It's essentially some multi-level marketing product, where the more patches you sell, the more money that you make. Falling right in line with my wife's comparison to a pyramid scheme, but MLMs are somehow legal. Legal. Eagle. Illuminati. It's all making sense now. Now, I've tried doing research on X39, and the only comments I've seen praise said product are brand new accounts never used before or after, or their entire profile is dedicated to shilling out for LifeWave and X39. In my own research, they appeared to just be overpriced stickers. They contain no medication, no special UV rays or anything of the sort. They're literally just an overpriced sticker with an air bubble. But my wife and I have made it very clear that we wanted no part in X39, nor did we want our daughter to have it. Even if it's fake, we wanted no part in it, and on the off chance that it did do something, I didn't want our daughter to be used as their lab rat or guinea pig. Now, before we left our daughter with my in-laws, we provided them with some infant medication, just in case she got sick. Can never be too safe, you know? Well, we returned home from the work trip early because our daughter wasn't getting any better, so we picked her up and went home. We were going to give her a bath, and in the process of taking off her jacket, we found an X39 patch on her arm. Upon finding it, we immediately called her parents and demanded to know why she had a patch on her. Her parents tried to say that it's safe for the baby. We even ordered the ones for ages 7 and under, and that it's practically medication. Their words which still didn't answer our question. So my wife checked the go bag and the Motrin we gave them was, while it was used, not used very much at all. Her parents tried claiming that someone else in their group or whatever gave it to their son and they got better in a week. The point is, we didn't buy it, nor did we care. We've made it abundantly clear that we wanted nothing to do with X39 and we didn't want our daughter to be a part of it. They failed to listen. My wife was on the phone with them for over an hour, and while I don't know the exact length of the conversation went to, I know that it at least ended with her screaming, Going to see my effing daughter again, and if you attempt to come to my house, we will call the police! Before hanging up. That was three days ago now, and we've had several missed calls from family members, her parents, her siblings, and even family friends all saying that we overreacted and that they were just trying to help. Maybe we did overreact, but we wanted nothing to do with that, and despite making it clear, they went against our wishes and did it anyways. And instead of giving my daughter actual medication, they tried to give her some placebo patch, her parents tried claiming that we're stopping them from seeing their only grandchild over something so small, but we didn't want to hear it. Am I the asshole? In the comments, Linda Pandrick says, I kinda think that you're the asshole here for leaving your sick baby to go out of town. And OP says, We didn't leave a sick baby to go out of town. We left her with her grandparents while she was fine. We only packed Motrin because, as I stated in my post, you can never be too careful. She got sick while we were out of town, not before. You say that like it's snake oil, like it's just as bad as the X39. Was it Advil and cough syrup, or just a generic bottle that you wrote infant medication on? You expect us to believe that you gave them medication just in case she got sick, and then she immediately got sick? Come on, this sounds like total BS. OP says, her grandparents don't exactly have children medication lying around. We packed her Motrin, which I quite literally stated later in the post had you read it, not some generic bottle or snake oil, and just as bad, nor do they have the ability to really go anywhere. They live a good 30 to 40 minutes outside of any nearby town. The drive to and from her parents is a grand whole hour drive from where we live. 
and my wife and I quite literally work with sick people all the time. No, I'm not a doctor, nor do we have medical expertise, so my wife and I contracting something is usually pretty high. So we pack Motrin, or whatever the store brand is that we'll buy, every time we left her with her grandparents for more than a day. Beneficial Breath says, Not the asshole. They will never see your child without supervision again. The problem is not the patch in and of itself, while it's still totally BS, the problem is that your daughter was sick. And rather than following your instructions on how to take care of her, they chose to use their own BS method. They are rejecting your parental authority unfairly, breaking your trust, and are now surprised that there is consequence. They are the same kind of grandparent that are told of nut allergies, but still give peanut butter to their grandchildren because, oh, it's not that serious, and go all surprised Pikachu face when parents need to go to the ER because of the allergy reaction after the visit. The coconut oil story always flashes in my mind when I think of grandparents being told about and willfully ignoring a deadly allergy. Quote, they are rejecting your parental authority unfairly. This right here is what it all boils down to. Opie and his wife are doing what's best for their child, just like they are supposed to. Cat52000 says, I disagree with downgrading this to, it's probably just a sticker. My daughter is allergic to the adhesive in bandages. A freaking band-aid gives my kids skin rashes. Maybe the patch is a placebo. Maybe it has some weird plant from the rainforest. Maybe it's a colored sticker that can cause an allergic reaction. You don't know, and the infant isn't the person to test this out on. Not the asshole. Completely agree. They just went against what you told them to do. They deserve to feel the consequences of their actions. You can kind of just generally run the numbers on a situation like this. Would you trust the grandparents if it wasn't something like this patch? If it was essential oils or something of that nature which the kid would breathe in or they tried to feed to the child? What if it was the coconut oil story? You know, this patch does seem a bit harmless, but at the end of the day, it's about what these people are standing for which is pseudoscience and not caring about the general health and well-being of your child because their own stupid, dangerous and misinformed ideas go front and center before your wishes and your medication that you know won't kill your child. So I don't think that you're the asshole here for not allowing them to see your daughter anymore. Who knows what other rabbit hole these people could go down and seriously injure your child. Do you really want to take that risk? Because I know I wouldn't. And now, on to the updates. About a month ago, I made this post ranting about my in-law's weird obsession with a, for lack of a better term, cult regarding stem cell regeneration through patches, which clearly isn't a real thing. There's been some development on that end, and while I'm confident things will likely end here, I wanted to give a quick update for those who may have been curious. I'm writing this on the toilet at work, so don't mind the rushiness of it all. After my wife essentially cut ties with them, and we received a million phone calls and text messages from family and friends, things quieted down for about a week or two. We started having my sister watch our daughter instead when we had to go to work. We haven't had another out-of-town trip since the initial post, however. Through those couple of weeks, we never really heard anything beyond a couple of supposed shit-talking posts on Facebook, bitching about us, but I can't seem to find the posts. We thought things were probably, hopefully, going to end there, but boy, were we wrong. And this is quite the jump from the last post. My wife and I were visited by CPS about two weeks ago or so, after they received concerning calls about supposed child abuse and negligence within the household. Of course, nothing like that happened, and the caseworker was very quick to see that. We had asked who reported her, and while she couldn't say... We had a suspicion that it was from her parents. We were completely helpful and cooperative with the caseworker, and after she left that night, my wife called her mum up and asked her if she's the one who called CPS. Surprisingly, her mother took full accountability, but, not so surprisingly, tried to spin it around in her favour, claiming that she did it for our own good because our daughter was sick and she wasn't getting any better when she was there. So clearly, we were doing something awful as parents. Kids get sick. 
It happens. But they are also extreme anti-vaxxers. Not just COVID, I mean everything, from even as something as trivial as the flu shot. Yet they're willing to shill out thousands of dollars for some supposed stem cell regeneration sticker. The effing hypocrisy and irony in their bullshit is unmatched. My wife didn't really know how to react to that, so she basically told her mum to go F herself and that she wants nothing to do with her again. I know I said a few comments on the last post saying maybe we shouldn't have cut them out entirely, but now I'm starting to question why we didn't cut them out years ago before our daughter was even a thought in our heads. About a week after the first audit, my mother-in-law showed up to our house on my day off while my wife was at work and essentially demanded to see our daughter, forcing her way into our home by pushing past my arm. When I told her to get the hell out of my house and that she had no business marching in here like that, she essentially told me that I'm unfit to be a parent because I'm depriving my daughter of the help that she desperately needed because she's clearly a very sick child. My daughter is perfectly healthy right now and in fact has had no stuffy nose and no high temperature. Nothing. I told my mother-in-law straight up that she was batshit insane I went off on her about how she lied to us, went against our wishes, had the audacity to call and lie to CPS, and then show up at our house unannounced, uninvited, and march herself inside, as well as everything about her X39 life wave bullshit. We argued there for a while, before I finally got so fed up, I told her to leave my house before I call the police. She stormed out of the house and in true Karen fashion said, This isn't over, before slamming my door. I immediately called my wife, who was of course irate. The following morning, we filed a restraining order at the courthouse from her mum and dad, because they are clearly not in their right mindset. The caseworker has to audit us a few more times as per their guidelines over the past two weeks, and yesterday was her last day where she informed us that we're doing good and that she's sorry for the trouble they caused. We kept her up to speed on the life wave shit, the showing up unannounced, and the restraining order, and though she couldn't really take a side, she seemed apologetic. But my wife and I are pretty livid. We started looking at houses in another state to get as far away from her in-laws as possible. Our company has offices out there, so it's entirely possible that we could just be transferred, so we're crossing our fingers that all goes well. The restraining order gets filed soon enough, and we'll get a place clear across the country so that this will hopefully be my last update. In the comments, Janet in Spain says, Moving far away sounds like an excellent idea at this point. I would not push it past her mother to try kidnapping your daughter. She seems quite insane enough to do that. Thank you for the update. Please do update again if you get a chance to move far, far away. And don't give the new location info to anyone who might tell any of the Crazy Pants family, or they'll probably call CPS in the new state. Next update, nutty in-laws attempt to file grandparents' rights lawsuit. Also, change the locks on when you move. If she's crazy enough to do what she's already done, she's crazy enough to try and pick the lock. Wow. That took a turn. Good for you and your wife, and that CPS worker sounds nice. I wish there were criminal charges for baseless complaints like this. There's probably a law that would allow it somewhere, but at least that process being over is good. Some states are finally jumping on board with charges against baseless claims as being harassment and filing false reports wasting state resources. The problem is CPS reporting allows for anonymity, so it can be hard to prove unless the reporting individual is dumb enough to give their full information. Ooh, that commenter questioning sending infant medication pissed me off. We never travel with our 18-month-old without infant Tylenol and Motrin. My parents, the only ones who watch him overnight, also have a stash. What a dickish thing to say. Also, people questioning that it was so suspicious that she got sick? Like, have they ever met a person under the age of two? It's like their job. They are sick 40 hours a week trying to put in overtime. Ridiculous. And the moron questioning why they left when their child was sick. It was for work. Sometimes we don't have a choice. Reddit is always, just quit. Real life doesn't work that way. Opie even says that the baby wasn't even sick when they left. 
He and his wife left a perfectly healthy baby with her grandparents and then came back to a sick baby. The lack of reading comprehension and just general comprehension of reality was impressive in the comments. I don't have kids, but friends do, and I am very, very aware that kids are sick all the effing time. It's one of the most known things about having kids. They get sick all the time. Yeah, those comments included were so infuriating. This isn't an attack on you, OP, but clearly these idiots have never seen kids before. This is like going, so you deliberately left your kid with someone else with a shitty diaper because you packed extra diapers? Gotcha. Like, no? Kids get sick literally out of the blue. You prepare for as many eventualities as you can. I bet that if OP hadn't packed medication, the comments would be scolding him for lack of preparation and saying, well, 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 what did you expect them to do when you left a kid without medication? They used what they had. If you want a specific medication, you should have packed it. Am I the asshole for telling my cousin I'm not having a child-free wedding? Her daughter just isn't invited. I, 27 male, am getting married in the fall to my fiancé, 25 female, and we've decided that friends and family can bring their kids, since for the most part, the kids are well behaved and will be with a sitter for the night so the parents can enjoy the festivities. The only exception is my cousin Linda's daughter, Seri, 12. Linda is entitled and selfish, and she's made her daughter entitled and selfish too. Two years ago, my other cousin, Linda's sister, Lily, got married, and Seri ruined the wedding by throwing a tantrum and destroying the cake because she was jealous that Lily's daughter was the flower girl. Linda recently called me up to talk and brought up child-free weddings and how terrible they are. Her invitation said nothing about a child-free wedding. It had her name, her husband's name on it, and no plus one or anything to indicate that Carrie could come. I told her that I wasn't having a child-free wedding. Sari just wasn't invited because of what happened at Lily's wedding. I don't want a repeat of Sari seeing that she's not the flower girl again and then throwing another fit. Linda has since gotten all of her friends and the few people in the family who take her side to bombard me, my fiancé, and my family with texts about how selfish we are for purposefully excluding one child while everyone else can bring their kids. Edit, everyone keeps asking, why invite Linda at all? My family is very big on family is everything, family first, and respect your elders. If I had not invited Linda and her husband at all, the shitstorm would be much bigger, and the majority of my family would be calling me to tell me to invite her. In the comments, not the asshole, uninvite anyone that complained. For real, excise all of this bullshit. I've never been around anyone who acts like this, and I'm 40. I read the wildest shit on here. So true. I mean, a kid smashing a wedding cake because they weren't to the flower girl? It's actually wild. OP is not the asshole. Is it asshole -ish to exclude someone? Mostly, yes. Is it asshole -ish to exclude someone to ensure a smooth wedding? Maybe, no. Is it asshole -ish to exclude an entitled child while teaching mummy a lesson? Hell yeah! My mother would have ended me if I did something like that, and she was a gentle parent before the concept really existed. Right? Lol, I'm getting Homer choking Bart images thinking about how that would have played out. Straight up, this is what would have happened to me, and I would have deserved it. Not the asshole. Sari was 10 when she threw her fit, old enough to know better. So she's 12, going on 13 now, with extra fun hormones raging through her system. Has she or did she show any remorse for her behavior? Is that an ongoing issue with her throwing tantrums when she is not the sole focus? Oh my god, she was 10? I was thinking she was 3 or something. Holy hell. OP, not the asshole. Uninvite Karen and anyone else who bombarded you and said mean things. Tell them the wedding isn't child-free, but it is feral tyrant-free. And that covers Seri and Karen. No one's obligated, nor entitled, to be invited to your wedding. Not the asshole, but I would reply, you're so right. It was really meant to exclude a child from the wedding that her parents are invited to. Therefore, I rescind the invite to you and your husband. Oh my, I've made a terrible mistake in not inviting Seri. I meant to not invite any of you. 
I think the edit kind of covered everyone's opinions there before we got to the comments. If this family is as close as OP is saying they are, they're going to start a shitstorm if you don't invite the parents, but I can imagine they would have leeway for the child not being invited. Kind of seems like you're up Shits Creek without a paddle in this one, and I don't really think there is a good answer, because either way, someone's going to be pissed off. It's either just the parents are pissed off and everyone else understands, or everyone's pissed off and no one really wins and a big shitstorm ensues. At the end of the day, it is your wedding and you do get to decide to do that if you want. I don't think that you're an asshole for telling her that it's not a child-free wedding, her daughter just isn't invited. But I do see a potential fire in your future. One that won't be easy to put out. And now, on to the update. I forgot about this account, but here is a small update in case anyone wanted to know what happened with Seri and Linda. It's not that fun or exciting. Linda decided to boycott the wedding and got quite a lot of the family to boycott it with her. My fiancé and I got to invite more of our own friends to fill the empty seats, and we didn't have the usual family drama that always seems to occur at events because all of the people who created the drama were absent. Emily was not the flower girl. Our friends' kids each got a small basket of petals to throw around. All in all, we had a great time. No tantrums, no cake smashing. And we've not been going to family events as much, apart from like Christmas at my parents', which is always a small affair, with only immediate family, so no Linda and Seri. Linda moved on from the wedding onto something else equally as stupid and insignificant, as has everyone else. Sari's dad actually put his foot down for the first time. She's going to get held back a year for her poor grades, and I think she's going to do some kind of behavioral therapy. I'm not sure though, that's all I've heard through the grapevine. Maybe she'll get invited to the next wedding if her behavior actually improves. In the comments, Emotional Bonus 934 says, What I never understood was why 12 would be upset at not being a flower girl when she has aged out of it. I was forced to be a flower girl at 6, my sister was 11 and too old. Linda probably promised that she would be. One of the many things that I've learned on Reddit, especially Am I the Asshole, is that entitled people have no problem assigning roles in other people's weddings to themselves and their family members. That is definitely a possibility. A pretty sad one too, considering that the actual flower girl at the prior wedding had been the bride's own daughter to say nothing of the fact that the bride there was Linda's sister. It should have been obvious from the get-go who the flower girl in that wedding was going to be, and both Linda and Seri would and should have been fully aware of it months in advance. The fact that Seri went Hulk smash on that cake just says how deep the entitled mindset involved runs. Altogether, I find it unsurprising when OP said that having Linda and her supporters not attend the wedding meant a decided lack of drama. I imagine that at least some of those in the family who did attend noticed and appreciated that lack also. Not every kid that throws a tantrum is mentally disabled, just bad parenting. Yeah, and even if the kid did have a disability, what is OP supposed to do? Invite her and allow her to potentially throw another tantrum and destroy another cake? Exactly. It doesn't actually matter whether it's a disability or not in this case, a disability might make someone less culpable in some morally abstract sense, but for the people they hurt, it doesn't matter. I hate parents who bring their kids up this way, spoiling them and then acting like their children can do no wrong. Don't have kids unless you're prepared to put the work in as they grow up. I'm glad that OP put her foot down and let the trash throw itself out. It's desperately unfair to the kids too. They end up with everyone hating them, and they've usually got no idea why. Yeah, it's honestly quite cringe reviewing that situation, thinking a 10-year-old has been convinced by their mother that they're going to be the flower girl, and then allowed to destroy the wedding cake and cause a scene? Honestly, Linda is a terrible person for cultivating an environment like that. I know you can blame Seri for her actions, but she's put in an environment where that is encouraged and normalized. Seri continues to draw the short straw in every single situation, and I can't imagine that's going to go well for her mental state as she grows up. 
genuinely shame on Linda for not doing her due diligence as a parent and putting Sari so far on the back foot that I can only speculate, but it does seem as though her poor performance at school and the fact that she has to go to behavioral therapy now, probably as a result of terrible parenting. That's my two cents, and I know jack and shit, as we have already established. What do you guys think?